Hello and welcome to session number 72 of Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi. Did everyone just hear that voice? That's right. Jory is back. Hello, I'm back. Who? Who? We I had was to. <laughs> we <laughs> had to sacrifice Dennis in order to get her back. Uh, so the number of players has remained the same. Um, uh, we shall miss him. Get back from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, back at our table. There have been a, a few changes, some that will not take effect yet. New, new minis, new abilities. Everybody has leveled up. Whoa! There's a pile of dice on Joy's table. <laughs> Is they're mine? They're, they're all yours. Shiny yeah, rocks. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them yet, but I'm you gonna do something them, with them. You know, did, did we ever show you that this cannon actually shoots dice? Yes. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Whenever somebody gets upset at you, I'm going to unlock it so you can move it around. Just aim it at whoever upsets you and just oh, yeah. dice in and <laughs> shoot. <laughs> Like, okay, I'll play with this later. Yeah. Oh, Maybe you need to be locked. It. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> I'm back for 30 seconds and I already broke everything. Oh no. All right. If well you then. fired it while it was in the floor, the whole table would have gone flying. Boom. Um, Austin. <laughs> yes. Austin. Uh huh. Austin. What? It's recap time. Yes, yes, hush now. I'll take it from here, Miss Winther. If that oh. is your real name, <laughs> you make me stick. My fellow players and I have been spoon-fed little morsels of lore, as if we are but we small creatures, unable to choke down the massive girth of your content. But now... As of last session, you've gone and overdosed Matt with a serving of lore so tremendous, so insidious, that he will never be the same. Well, two can play at that game, because I have your whole campaign figured out, and I'm about to unleash it all. You think Luzan can see the future? Oh, I've got her beat by a long shot. So please, sit back and watch in horror as I carefully dissect your carefully crafted plot. Please bring up the Community Conspiracy Corkboard. Okay. What are these doing here? <laughs> it's not me, I swear it. <laughs> Those don't belong on the board. <clears throat> but before we get into session three of Austin's Guide to the Outlander's Guide to Ladaria, <laughs> a brief summary of last session. Pontifex's we dad introduces himself board? as Exarch. This name will be important, but we'll get to that later. We head in their house. Aran waits to be invited in because he is a vampire. We sit down, Exarch <laughs> brings us food. We make awkward small talk until one brave hero musters up the courage to ask where Luzan is. Exarch says that she can see the future ever since we, she was a child, which, by the way, means that she knew all along that their research would only bring them pain, but she continued anyway, meaning she likes pain. Exarch says she's out. He barely says she's out before out comes in, and she comes in from being out. Now inside from out, Luzanne looks Pontifex up and down and upside down and inside out beside his frown, where she sees spells by the seashore. She says there's someone watching through his eyes, and she takes us to the middle of nowhere where she proceeds to rip Pontifex's face off and have us fight the physical manifestation of the scrying spell on Pontifex. We destroy it and walk home to find a pitcher of healing potion waiting for us because Luzanne knew we would get hurt. Dirty, dirty Luzanne. Pontifex goes downstairs and is met with a long-awaited explanation of a terrible truth unknown to the rest of us. So, this leaves us with a question. What the heck is going on? What are they talking about? Why is the truth so painful? Buckle your seatbelts. I'm about to tell you exactly how it all fits together. It all starts with two worlds, separate but intertwined. Plurna and Ladaria. These two worlds are different in many ways, but what if I were to tell you that there was a connection there from the beginning? How is that possible? Well, it has to do with the gods. 
I present a theory. All gods can assume a humanoid form. Okay, so if this is true, why is this relevant? Because we've been walking amongst gods this whole campaign. You want to know what Exarch and Luzan told Pontifex? <laughs> they said, they said this. Also, there's no more space on the board, so we have to do this three-dimensionally. Please hover <laughs> this one and angle it near Pontifex. <laughs> you promoted. You can do it yourself. I can do it. I have the power, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How else are you going to give your PowerPoint presentation? <laughs> we have to do this three-dimensionally. Oh, no. <laughs> this is Dragon Chess style. Oh, oh no! <laughs> the lines are three-dimensional, too! Okay. So, they said to Pontifex, <clears throat> Oh, Pontifex, I'm sorry you have to find out this way, but you have goat blood running through your veins. <laughs> yes, that's right. Exarch and Luzan, while together, are the goat. The goat's description reads, Revered for his dignity, composed behavior, and determination to climb to the top, the goat silently watches the world below uh, with everlasting curiosity. <clears throat> Exarch and Luzan are at the top of the world, looking down with everlasting curiosity, because they are immortal, by the way. But you already knew that. Let's go ahead and connect these lines. <laughs> this is going to be so chaotic. <laughs> Great. Great. <clears throat> what is the goat's domain, Matt? Uh, order? That's right, order. Why did they burn their research? To maintain order. Where did they leave their child? At the doorsteps of the Church of the Goat. So there would have to be two completely opposite personalities present to maintain order. And wouldn't it be safe to say that Exarch and Luzan are opposites in every way? Luzan is super duper powerful. Exarch is a little wimp. Luzan is, is very fierce and stern. Exarch is a simp. <laughs> it's to maintain order. Let's not forget that the goat spoke directly to Pontifex through a dream. It certainly explains Luzanne's godlike power of foresight. Now I know what you're thinking, everyone. Austin, that's a bit of a stretch. Is it? Then what if I told you that we've already met at least three other gods and you were just unaware of it this whole time? Oh no. Let's do a little <laughs> test. <clears throat> the fox and the wyvern. I'm going to tell you some details about their relationship, and you all feel free to chime in when you get it. The fox's domain is knowledge. The wyvern's domain is forge. Talix received a vision in the dream world of the wyvern talking to his friend, presumably the fox, because we have already learned that the fox and the wyvern have a testy yet friendly relationship. Here's the vision. You see enormous branches stretching across your vision with leaves as big as your tall. Standing on one of those branches, its claws digging deep into the wood, is a wyvern wrapped almost entirely in bulky, shimmering armor. As the wyvern turns his head, you can hear the whirring of mechanisms and the grinding of gears at work in his metallic suit. Later on, he says this about his friend. I hate him. Yes, both simultaneously. I hate him, and he is my friend. He has hurt me many, many times, but I have no one else. Who does that sound like? Samuel and Orm! That's right! Jamuel is the fox, and Orm Tinhart is the wyvern. Jamuel's the guy who knows things, a whole book of knowledge on this continent, keen on exploration. He's sneaky, he's sly, he's a bit of a butthead. Ladies might call him... A fox. A fox? Okay. <laughs> and is it any coincidence? Foxy? Okay. Is it any coincidence <laughs> that clerics of the fox lose their powers right around the time Jamuel is murdered? Huh? I think not. I think not. <laughs> the I wyvern. Are you? 
The wyvern was literally seen in Talix's vision wearing a mech suit with gears and stuff. Tinheart has a wyvern mech suit with gears and stuff. The wyvern is all about the forge. Tinheart geeked out about metals and has an army of mechanical animals that just happen to match the deities. The wyvern and the fox have a long-standing feud that the wyvern described as, yes, he is my friend and I hate him. That couldn't possibly describe anyone better than Tinheart and Jamuel. It certainly explains their godlike powers. So, who else that we've met is a god? I gotta bring these out. We must three-dimensionalize them. Don't look at that. It's not there yet. <laughs> Wyvern. Uh, Up. Oh, God. Oh, God, it's getting bigger. Okay. I'm moving it over <laughs> it's here. Really, it's really big. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like a mirror <laughs> game. We bounce the light around until the truth reveals itself. <laughs> Wyvern is Tinheart. Wyvern and Janual are connected. This Plurin gods. Okay. So, who else that we've met is a god? Let's circle back around to what I said at the beginning of the recap. There was a connection be between Plurna and Ladaria from the beginning. How do I know this? The devils of Ladaria had Sunny's soul. Sunny died on Plurna, but her soul was in Ladaria, and she was brought back on Ladaria. How did her soul get there? The answer lies in Plurnan divinity. Pop quiz, who is the deity who oversees the cycle of life, death, and resurrection? The Phoenix! The Phoenix! <laughs> yes, that's right. Not Winther's cat. And not the panther. Not the panther. The phoenix. We're going to put it he's, over here. He's EP. There we go. <laughs> it's backwards. Yes, I know. That's <laughs> yes. because this whole campaign is. Oh. <laughs> Oof. Yes, that's right. Why? If you're connecting it, then why'd you put it so far away? I didn't. What am I connecting it to? I don't know, but you're making this line really long. Sunny, way over here? Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sunny. And do I have a card for death? Oh, wait. No, I don't. But I have one for something else. Who is the one figure that all of us, while in proximity of Vakanoth Seed, have seen whether, whenever we are on the brink of death? The Drow. The Drow Man. The Drow Man. The Drow Man. Tekka has seen the souls of the deceased Krelko fly into the drow's blue cube portal. That portal sends souls to the Ladarian Ocean because the drow man is the phoenix. Now that leaves us with some critical questions. Wait, I thought what? Sunny was the phoenix. No, 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 <laughs> no. You Wait, misunderstand. So Sunny? Sunny is a woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, okay, it's weird that we're making Sunny the Phoenix and not the Panther, but okay, no, no I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. The Drow Man is the Phoenix. Okay, okay, the Drow is the Phoenix. All right, let so, him cook. Oh, so, Sunny, okay. <laughs> Sunny what? has no relation other than she died, no, probably. No, Sunny, she Sunny, died Sunny, once. Sunny didn't die on Plurna. <laughs> she, she didn't? No, she, she didn't. She died on Plurna. I don't think Sunny has any connections here. Hmm. Get out of here. But right. <laughs> every single thing you said up until now has been 100% correct. I love how the card is over here and everything is right here. Okay. <laughs> such so, a <laughs> so this leaves us with some critical questions. So what, many. <laughs> what other gods are interfering in the world disguised as humanoids? How does Vonan, the wolf, Seems so uncannily similar to the Phoenix. I don't actually know. I'm genuinely asking you. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, <have any> <laughs> drow? you have Vonan's a drow who looks just like the Phoenix. And, and like, the Phoenix is also a drow, like apparently. Yes. They're, it's the all drow, drow all the way Vonan. down, like I've been saying. <laughs> They're all drow. What is their connection? <laughs> Why is he over here? 
Because he, he's Your over the wolf! Connections to the phoenix! He's over the wolf! But why is he the phoenix twice? <laughs> is he? I only see one. Yeah, I, I see two. Oh, I I'm sorry. Okay. Anyway. I can't take hmm. these off. Don't forget the drow man's way over here, in case that's also relevant. And no, no why, relevant why is the goat getting weaker? Well, that is what Pontifex's parents had to talk to him about. Remember how when they're both together, they are the goat? Well, they are getting a divorce. <laughs> no! 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 How did you know? And the world is in danger of collapsing as a result. <laughs> They've decided one gets Plurna, the other one gets Ladar. <laughs> Joint custody. And divorce results in the hole. <laughs> in Pontifex's and that's all for now, board. folks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was scary there for a minute. I don't know if missing a couple weeks made me more confused or less confused right now. <sighs> oh god. Okay, well, yeah, that's it. Austin is done it. He has <laughs> unveiled uh, unveiled everything about my campaign. <laughs> it's it's over. <laughs> so Sunny both <laughs> is and is not the Phoenix because my parents are getting a divorce. Yes. You misunderstand. We removed the Sunny thread. She has nothing to do with the Phoenix. Sunny <laughs> was removed from the Phoenix, much like I was removed from my parents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I am demoting Austin. I gave him too much power. <laughs> <laughs> demoted. <laughs> All right, Do I so we've established this? Uh, we know With who the goat is now. We know the wyvern, and we know the phoenix, and we know the wolf. So and how many fox. is that? Oh, and we know the fox as well. So at least one, two. There's a Three. lot more. <laughs> There's so many more gods we have to find. <laughs> Six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine more. And also the tree. All. Yep. We gotta trade rocks with all of them. I see. I don't, I don't feel good rewarding this, but have your conspiration. Nice. And the don't what? misread it. <laughs> conspiration. Conspiration. <laughs> Why is it? Oh, conspiracy! I get it. I was like, why? Why is it not? <laughs> oh <laughs> my gosh! I missed you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Jory. <laughs> Jory, help me! <gasps> I cannot help the anyone here. Into the cannon. He just shot launch. the coin. <laughs> Where did he go? It's gone. Oh. <gasps> Tails. More like a disc. I love this cannon. We can. It's been here since I've been here. We can increase its power. We there should we not. Go. We Too just should not. <laughs> I've already done it. Let's see if let's see if we can hit Sunny in the painting. <laughs> oh oh hell. <laughs> we are this thing towards like center children. of the table. Every time I cast Fireball, they're Take going your toy. Now. It's mine now. We can't touch it. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> okay. Um, what am I doing? Am I running a session? I guess. What has happened? <clears throat> what happened? Oh, no. XR can lose on. the divorce. <laughs> give, give them to me. <laughs> well, that's a we're, solid guess. We're going to begin this <laughs> session. Not where we left off, but with a tiny, tiny flashback. Um, because there's something we didn't uh, handle when it happened, so mm. we're going to do it now. Um, Go I see have the no Phoenix. idea where I've put the music. Hey. Okay. So, Pontifex. You are in complete darkness. What would you like to do? Cast light. On what? Uh, his staff. 
Okay. No, on his little, on his orb, the astrolabe. The astrolabe, all right. Historically, yeah. Um, in the, there's just the briefest moment of, uh, like, a, a, a loss of sense of directions. You kind of remember what you were doing a moment ago, and now you're here. And then you figure out, oh, I know what's going on. And the first order of business is to see where you are. So you produce your astrolabe and uh, place uh, a light spell upon it. Your sphere lights up. And uh, you are in a very large area. Uh, a big room filled with bookshelves. <clears throat> ah, excuse me. Oh. Um... Outside, you can see some windows, and it appears to be nighttime, and there's no sources of light uh, uh, outside of your astrolabe. Um, oh, and here we are. Uh, what would you like to do? Uh, he's going to uh, browse the bookshelves and see... Like what is what is the what what what's the contents of this tiny library? Okay. Well, for sort of business, the there's a lot of books here, so you're gonna look at them. Uh, you mm -hmm. approach the shelves, your feet hit this uh, very smooth uh, stone floor, and because it's so quiet in here, you can hear the the echo of, of your own footsteps. Uh, the shelves they're made of this dark colored wood, and you. You slide your fingers across the backs of, of the books, and for all of them, the writing is odd. It doesn't feel like a, a language that you know anything about. And in fact, it's probably not a language at all. Every time you look at the same book twice, it seems like the carters get scrambled around. There is no interpreting any of the text you're seeing. Hmm. Okay, uh, are these um, the 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 text that there is, or that he's seeing brief pieces of? Do they seem like identical, like the same handwriting? Like are these handwritten by the same person, or are this just as a collection of? unrelated stuff. They all look different from one another. Okay. Um, then I guess he's gonna just briefly look around and if there's nothing else of immediate interest then he's gonna look out the window. The place seems uh, pretty normal. It's a circular uh, shaped uh, library like area. Um, mm -hmm. The shelves mainly contain books. Some of them have some instruments or even containers like glass vials and bottles. <clears throat> there is an empty space in the middle, uh, like a small elevated stone platform, but there's just nothing on it. It's just an empty area. And when you go to look outside the window, um, you see a starry sky, a bit partially cloudy. Off in the distance, the uh, an enormous silhouette blocks the sky. The silhouette of a gigantic tree. Bacchanal. Um Besides that, there is completely empty sp space between the building you're in and Bacchanal herself. It's just a grassy field with no trees, no buildings in between, just a field. Hmm. Uh, I guess after wandering around for a while and not finding much else, he's just going to walk towards the center of the room and just kind of like, hello? You call out, you hold up your astrolabe, and you wait for a sound, for movement. Roll a perception check. It's quiet. It's just very, very quiet. 
As far as you know, every time you or one of your companions has fallen unconscious and has reached, has stood on the brink of death, whenever they were near the others, whenever they were near the seed, they met someone here. You met someone. Whether this is a physical location or perhaps somewhere in your mind, you always met in this drow. This is the first time that he's not here to greet you. You call out again a couple more times. Only the echo of your own voice answers. And then you take this deep, sharp breath. And you feel this cold all around you. You're no longer standing. You're lying down on your back in the snow. Uh, with the face of your worried father greeting you. You're back to reality. And from there, we're going to skip ahead to the present. <clears throat> so, um, while Pontifex and his parents headed uh, underground towards the floors beneath yours, everybody else remains in this area with an underground heated pool. Um, after a few seconds, as you hear a faraway door closing behind Pontifex and Exarch, you, it, it, that sound is then followed by a loud clanking, a sound that's very close by, and you all turn instantly to see that Sunny has dropped her backpack, dropped her sword. She she shouts, "Cannonball!" and she runs and jumps into the pool. Close on. So what? I didn't catch that, Jory. So just just close on. Just all wet now. Just. Oh yeah, Cl close uh, on. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think Tekka's just gonna start looking around. If they're not here, like he's just gonna like check out this cabin. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, Exarch had led all of you to the underground pool, but you can absolutely just go walk back upstairs um and what are you looking for i think pip is gonna join tekka <laughs> also uh yeah i think tekka still has this faint memory uh of us in the nowhere tower pontifex trying to opening that door and like uh being rejected basically and yeah tekka wants to try to find something that looks like that door okay uh, since uh, Pip is with you, um, you can help one another out, so you can either both roll or one of you rolls at advantage, I will help and we're going to do investigation. Investigation, okay, no, all right, all right, we'll try it, we'll try it. Thank you, Pip. You got Let's it. See how this goes. Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> As average you can be. That's a tap. Okay, done. Um, this is, uh, Sid, since you missed the last session, uh, I, w I, w I was trying to make things simple for me. So during uh, the the battle where the party went outside to um, remove this magical effect from Pontifex, I said that Tekka and Virion stood behind the cabin and helped like clean the table, like put away things, the food and whatnot. Um, so you have already seen a little bit more of the cabin than um, anyone from the party has. Uh, you've seen the inside of the kitchen, you've uh, learned where uh, the, the cutlery goes, where to keep the plates and whatnot. Um, and, and for those of you who missed <clears throat> this description, um, Exarch and Luzan seemed ready for your arrival to the point where Exarch has been uh, making extra furniture 
just for you guys. So in the living room, there's this table that is really long for just two people and it looks brand new. And in addition to two chairs that are old and worn, there were a bunch more that were for the rest of you. And they were like, they were, they were the chairs that were for the fair books. There was a small one for Pip. Um, but outside of that, the rest of this cabin is just for the two of them. It's comfy. Um, and it's normal. This place does have a Plurnan-esque uh, vibe in terms of uh, the type of furniture, what it looks like, how the rooms are arranged. Uh, um, and nothing is really odd or catches your eye. You peek into their bedroom and it's just a normal bedroom. They have a storage room. You see a bunch of firewood set aside. Um, there's the dragon chess set in the living room with a game that appears to be currently in progress. You don't find a door that looks out of place, as in a door that isn't attached to a wall, like all the doors to Nowhere Tower have been thus far, and uh, uh, no door that remotely looks like the one or any of the ones you've seen in Nowhere Tower. This is the most... The It's just a very normal cabin. Pip, if they knew we were arriving here, they would have prepared. I do not think there is anything to learn. Mm. Yeah, you're probably right. I'm gonna look somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Pip going? Uh, Pip is gonna, like, try and look for, um, bookshelves and see if there's any, like, portraits on the walls or any... There are a lot of paintings on the walls. Uh, a lot of oil paintings, mostly of uh, scenes of nature. Uh, you recognize some that are, have been clearly painted from this point of view from this spot on the mountain um, there's a painting of the cabin itself and there's a couple of paintings of a giant tree which you pip with your own eyes you've never seen except in a few dreams or dream like places whoa whoa That's a big tree. Hmm. I I think I have seen this before. In uh with, you remember the, with the, drow. The, the drow. Yes. I saw this through a window. It's unmistakable. Yeah. But why would they know? Do they know the drow? That must be it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, just two people of Ladaria know nothing <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> Perfect. We'll question we'll question them about that later. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. This is great. This makes perfect sense. What is Virion up to? So I think she would stay hanging out with Sunny. I think after... I don't know exactly how long we took to get here, but... Even just gliding across a mountain, over a mountain range from what I gathered, walking all this way, I don't think... And, and stress cleaning the apartment, the, uh, the uh, house <laughs> after during the fight, apparently. I, I don't think she's too keen on, like, snooping around for the sake of it. So I think she'd just kind of hang back with Sunny. Not particularly keen to jump in the water like Sunny was, but mm -hmm. just kind of happy to have a place to chill for a little bit. And okay. not be outside, not be on the road. Just sort of be for a little bit. Um, 
I... I think that even if Brooke wouldn't jump in the pool, at some point, Sunny would have just dragged him in. <laughs> um, so the two of them are splashing <laughs> at each other and just, just having a good time. Uh, poor Brooke didn't empty his pockets beforehand, and it's a mess. This stuff is all in the water now. Um, from where you are in this room, outside of just the noise that Brooke and Sunny are making, um, you can't hear anything going on downstairs, but you do occasionally hear just the footsteps of Tech and Pip somewhere in the floor above you. It, this place is comfy. It's warm. That That's really the most pleasant part. It's just, it's warm. And it feels just homely. It feels like you've left all of your problems and issues outside, if at least for a few minutes. And you could almost forget all the pressure, all the problems on your shoulders, all the weight you've been carrying. And then at a moment when you finally allow yourself to just relax and take a deep breath, it, it all comes back, back into your mind. Anything else from Pip and Tekka? Um... I think Tekka might try out his new smelling ability. Uh, just see, like any untoward. I think specifically like something that smells like old, like either like really um, like there's mold or like a dust. Like there's a specific smell that old uh, materials have. I think that's what he's trying to pick out. Roll a perception check at advantage. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Anyone? When your investigation skills uh, um, uh, let you down, you instead close your eyes and take a deep breath. Everybody had smelled the the warm meal that was being cooked when you first walked in, but uh, you were it, you were able to pick out all the ingredients, all the spices, just from the first sniff that you took, and you find yourself really quickly and easily being able to just direct your attention to all these other smells that the cabin offers. Uh, quickly, you find a spot beneath one of the shelves where a lot of dust has been accumulated and nobody has cleaned up in a while and uh, a, a mouse ended up dying in there and it's beginning to smell bad. Uh, a spot in the kitchen where some food has fallen in between uh, bits of furniture and uh, is starting to rot. Um, the There is a smell that is somewhat familiar. It's different from what you're used to, but um, Pontifex, or rather his kind, they have this sort of just wet smell to their skin. Um, that for anyone else, it would be really faint. It's something that they wouldn't really notice, but but you do. And it kind of permeates this entire area. You can tell the places that where they, uh, that they visit the most. Uh, their bedroom smells strongly like them. Uh, those chairs in front of the coffee table uh, before the dragon chess board smells strongly like them. You're able to pinpoint the spot where where Exarch paints. You can smell the paint, even though right now it's not there, but just the spots on the floor that have been splattered with paint and cleaned over and over. You find that. And then... Faint. Ever, ever so faint. A few days ago... Uh, when you, right before you began your journey towards the mountain, when you first found Eren, Pip picked up an item, a staff that supposedly belonged to Jamio, uh, a staff that currently has been left in in Nowhere Tower with Orm Tenhart. And the smell of that staff, you find it here. 
you end up circling one of the couches in front of the fireplace. You remember having seen in a dream this was a spot where Jamuel had sat down and talked to, to Axark and Luzan. You figure he actually stayed here for at least a few days for you to be able to find this smell here. It feels like confirmation, in, in a way. Perhaps you didn't really need it, but... Your nose can pick up so much now that you would have never been able to otherwise. Pip, I cannot explain this, but... I know that Pontifex's parents has been here for a very long time. And they um, rarely have left. Okay. Why are you holding up the cushion so menacingly? <laughs> I... I can sense things I could not before. I can sense... The Jamuel was here. Oh. Like in that, in the vision. Right, right. Can you smell, can you smell his door? What did you no. roll, 21? Yeah. You do pick up on uh, the, the very same smell. And you begin to follow it towards the exit. It, it is outside. Somewhere. Not in this cabin. Okay. Pip puts his jacket on. <laughs> <laughs> Your makeshift shoes that uh, Aaron has made for you. <laughs> his, his snow flip-flops. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you follow Tekka outside. Tekka just following the smell, you end up behind the cabin, uh, where the Exarch and Luzan's garden opens up before your eyes. Looks like th there is a lot of different things that are growing here, but you go around it and further back, uh, essentially heading the opposite direction from where you guys originally arrived. And it's a small distance away. You walk perhaps for no more than a minute, trudging through the snow. Um, there is no previous footprints that you can follow. Whoever has been to the door um, hasn't been here long enough, anyone, to for there to still be any footprints on the freshly fallen snow. Uh, so to, to Pip, it seems like Taka is going in a completely random direction where there's no indication that there would be anything. And yet going around a bend uh, where the the mountain still stretches up a little bit further. There it is. Only a few feet away from the rocky surface of the, the side of the mountain. Uh, but not quite up against it. A door that doesn't actually lead anywhere. It's currently covered in snow at the very top of the frame. And it's just there. It will just uh, create bonfire around the door to thaw any ice around it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's very iced over. It takes you like a few minutes, but bit by bit, you melt away all the snow and all the ice. And uh, um, this is the same door as the one that uh, Tinart said that he attempted to open. And somebody shouted at him from the other side, demanding a password. And when he was unable to provide it, the door closed and he could not open it again. It's the same one. The one that uh, also Arian pointed out to you guys. Good nose, Tekka. When even I question myself, you do not, Pip. Why? Why would I? You never failed us before. And yet you are so sure that I will lead you to the right way. Well, yeah. You're, you're like my compass, Tekka. You always point the right way. 
there will be a day when that is not the case. And then I need you to be the your own compass. But for now, let's try to open this. Open a new way. And yeah, Tekka will try to open up this door as it's being uh, heated and defrosted by the bonfire. The door doesn't have a handle or a doorknob on either side. So you just try to push from one end, and when that doesn't work, you slip between the door and the side of the mountain, and you try to push from that direction, and it doesn't really seem to budge. <sighs> they must have protected this in some way, not wanting intruders. You, mm. you know how strong I am. There is something more to this. Yeah. Maybe there's like a secret secret knock. I'm going to try a few. Go. Tap, 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 tap. <laughs> stone, stone, rock. Knockity, knockity, knock, knock. And... Knock, 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 knock. Knock, knock, knock. The door appears all got, impervious Tekka. to all your knocks. I look at it through my gym. <gasps> it looks exactly the same. <gasps> Tekka! What? It's the same. Oh. Had you expected something else? Yeah. Like an open passage. Mm. <laughs> Pip just keeps looking around with the gym. <laughs> he said the cabin looks different through dreams. Ah, um, I did. Not to you, but yes. So you're going around and you're looking at the garden, and the garden looks a tiny bit different. Not a whole lot, but it feels like there's different plants growing, but not always. Only. Sometimes they don't match. And then as you make your way back towards uh, the, the cabin itself, it's like, it's very similar. And yet a few things are different, just a few details. It's like the longer you look at it and the more you realize that there's a window shifted over a few inches or um, the roof extending not quite as far. Icicles have formed in different spots on it. Uh, you can find all these little differences. There's still a cabin there that matches, for the most part, the one that you can see without the gem. There's also all these small little differences. None of them seem particularly meaningful. Just small details. Okay. Pip just looks through the gym until until the 10 minutes runs out and then just wanders around the house, walks down to the pool, walks back upstairs, says hi mm -hmm, to Tekka, mm -hmm. walks back down <laughs> and says, Miriam, how long have they been talking? I'm so bored. <laughs> it, it's been like 15 minutes. 15? <laughs> <Te laughs> Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> Entertain Ricky might me. To, to jump in the pool. I hate water, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Squeak is in the pool. Ugh. Um, it takes Pontifex and his parents about almost two hours to re-emerge. Uh, when they do, all three of them passing, uh, climbing up the stairs that lead all the way to the to the swimming pool. Uh, everybody roll an insight check. Uh, Matt, based on this, you can tell them how Pontifex looks. And uh, what his mood is like. <laughs> you can personalize the answer to these rolls.
Uh, oh, that's all of them. I didn't see. I didn't see pips. Uh, Seven, sixteen, eight. Yeah, uh, I think it's it's not super uh, deep. I think that uh, he he comes out of the the basement and he looks uh, almost relieved. Uh, like he looks uh, he looks content. Uh, for perhaps one of the first times in a in a decent amount of time, uh, he looked uh, like uh, fulfilled to some extent. Uh, I think uh, Tekka, you can tell um, that uh, he he's walking out, and it's almost like he isn't really looking your guys' direction. Uh, he is deep in thought, uh, like he. Uh, like he's playing through scenarios in his head uh, very, very rapidly. <laughs> I think that's it. He just looks like relatively content and happy, uh, but he's, he's probably playing, you know, 12 games of Dragon Chess simultaneously <laughs> in his head. That level of like intense computation thought. Did not expect you to come out looking happy. <laughs> e yeah. Exarch is... Uh, um holding back a soft and genuine smile uh, to everyone regardless of your roles Luzan looks exactly the same <laughs> expression <laughs> still completely neutral um, in like that kind of seriousness that comes across as like kind of kind of resting bitch face like you, you <laughs> your your in, your incentive uh, reading of it is that she she might be upset or angry or just in a bad mood, but she looks exactly like she did before, so not any better or not any worse. Um, Exarch gestures just very wildly at all of you and, and says, "Have you been having fun? Would you like anything? Snacks? Finally." <laughs> <laughs> You Pip were in is there like, for like three days. <laughs> Pip is right in front of the three of them, but the voice <laughs> comes from across the swimming pool where Squeak <laughs> is uh, is relaxing. <sighs> Squeak finding out that there is such a thing as like really big areas of water that is hot. That's like new to him. He's used to water being cold. He's like arms behind his neck uh, just wading backwards in the water. Yeah, big wings that let him just stay afloat really easily. Uh, I do think the, the professor is like uh, like walks over towards uh, like a random cupboard or something. Uh, and just like pops open the cupboard and then turns around with like a little small saucer of like heavily salted, very fishy fish. Like whatever this equivalent of like anchovies would be. Uh, <laughs> okay. And he just has like a, a smug, like satisfied look on his face. <laughs> uh, and he's just like walking back towards the group with this little saucer of very stinky, fishy fish. Uh, Tech just, the smell is overwhelming. Snacking away. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you can hear him salivating while he, like, very loud mouth noises. <laughs> and he's, just, he's just murdering this super salty fish. Squeak would come over to get some. What happened? <laughs> what happened? Stop talking through me, I'm eating! What happened? <laughs> you gotta throw me around for... Please? I'll read hey, your mind. What? <laughs> what happened? We're in the basement. Yes. Oh, it's just family stuff. Catching up after a long time, it would bore you. Oh, I, I don't want that. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get any it's worse than he already out. is. I'd immediately quell his curiosity to say it would be, it's boring. <laughs> Never mind. <Yeah. laughs> it's spicy, you wouldn't like it. <laughs> but uh, of note, uh, they they claim there is a, a door here that leads to uh, to Noor Tower, so we can uh, can actually visit fairly frequently. We found it. It is locked. 
Ah, very well. I'm sure they can do something about it. Oh, yeah, it takes a password. There you go. Can well, we know it? Oh, yes, I was waiting for you to ask me. Uh, the password is sweet, <laughs> sweet lemonade. Just say it in front of the door. We'll open right up. <laughs> Luzan, lemonade, huh? Luzan, completely serious, not just expression doesn't change even the slightest bit, as she says. Exarc picked the password. It was his idea. I'm shocked. Well, what can I say? I really like lemonade. And this is my surprised face. <laughs> what? Yeah, are, you, uh, I... are you already leaving? Well, we do have... Uh... Uh, things to get to. Oh, and uh, in case any of you are wondering, uh, they are unaware of this uh, supposed uh, witch that lives beneath the mountain and whatever curse, all of that mumbo jumbo. They don't really know. She wasn't here when we first moved in. Uh, we How haven't left since. Was that? Many, many centuries. Hmm. And then the DM counts. Hold on, because let me bring up my calculator. I can give you the exact <laughs> years. Uh, I hope Why this you... is correct, but it's 380 years. That's a long time. Wait, no. Hey, it's why do you look shit. younger than 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 the professor? Okay, I told number 373. Boom. They've counted. Um, 373 centuries. Years? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, oh, you know, we've been here for a while. Luzan just straight up begins to walk upstairs, but Exarch seems uh, to, like, be willing to stay to interact with, with Pip. Um, and uh, he glances briefly at Luzan as she walks away, and then he brings his attention back to Pip and says, Well, aging does not affect us. Okay. Must be nice. <laughs> Magic can do this and much more. Will you Maybe perform this days, I can on go back to my youth? Uh... On Trifax, do you, do you do you wish to go back to being a tadpole? Uh, maybe that is a bit far, but uh, maybe back in a bit of his physical prime. Well, okay, who am I kidding? I've never had much of a physical prime. <laughs> but, uh, before all of the early onset rigor mortis, as I'm going to call it. You well, know, if that ever yeah. interests you, uh, you know who to call. And then it's like, in his hand, he 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 rings a little bell. Yeah. Butterfucks will hold up the other little bell and jingle a little bell. <laughs> yep. What? What's that? What is that? It, what, uh, what they're doing? sending bells uh, from Glimmer a long time ago. Oh. Not to stay in touch. I've spent nearly 400 years with uh, no conversation with them. Come to find out, they're uh, incredibly competent magic users, or at least one of them. So, but they are both uh, supposedly fierce and dragon chess players, one of them uh, to the point of being called a cheater, so I'm excited. Wow. I mean, I, I know we have things to be doing, but I don't think staying another day or so would hurt. Make it be good for all of us. Yeah, I want to talk to your mom. <laughs> uh, good luck. <laughs> uh, you're welcome to try. I don't know how long your enthusiasm will last, but uh, she can be talkative if you pick a subject she uh, cares about, I found. 
Okay. I'm going to continue munching on this fish until I can no longer stand. <laughs> <laughs> Exarch, I have questions. I cannot Why? promise answers to all of them, but um, let's hear them. I'll try to help where, where I can. You have lived here in this cabin for a long time. Why separate yourself from others? There is... Peace to be found uh, in solitude. This is merely the life that we've chosen. I understand that it is unusual. Most people prefer company, but... This is what Lausanne and I wanted. And yet you allowed a door to the Nowhere Tower. I was opposed to the idea, but... Oddly, I suppose it was Luzan who agreed to it. Beginning to wonder if maybe she knew that a little tadpole would eventually find us and would be in need of it. And he smiles at Pontifex. We did ask uh, Mr. Fleetfoot to not bring visitors through it and not to mention our presence or existence and... He broke that promise once when he brought Mr. Moyer. Besides the two of them, you're the only visitors we've had in centuries. Since, well, ever. It's not exactly the most accessible place. So, do you know what has happened in Ladaria? Luzan and I have chosen to remain uh, um, ignorant of the events of um, both Plurna and Lidaria. But once Mr. Fleetfoot and later also Mr. Moyer visited us, we have learned of a few events that we missed from both continents. Just large brush strokes, none of the details. Are has you thinking Pontifex, of something in particular? Has Pontifex informed you of deities being weakened? Died? He has made mention of them, yes. And does this not worry you? About what premonitions that could be for our future? How old are you, Tekka? Not old, much, much younger than you. So yes, surely you are all the wiser. But still, I must ask. Oh, no, 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 it's not a matter of wisdom. Merely that in our lifetime, the god of all the gods of Plurna, well, she died, and then even at all the time she needed to come back eventually. A change is inevitable. Especially over the span of centuries. Gods come and go. Like everything else. So you accept it. As part of what? This cycle of life and death. Is there a point to trying to stop the tides? If it could change things, then why not? Well, I would love to hear your thought process. What do you think will change? What do you think is worth uh, avoiding? If the land I am born on is under the threat of being torn apart, then I will choose to save it at all possible 
then I believe you are already on the right path. You and Pontifex. And all of your companions. You have a plan, do you not? It is not our plan. It is a good plan. From what Aaron says, it is the only plan. Do you believe you could, you could come up with an alternative? I believe there are some on this land with the power to change things. But no, I have no plan. Then I would recommend to stay by Pontifex's side. You can pursue this plan that is not your own. Or you can look for alternatives. I believe you all have the power to make a difference. If you so decide, a desire. I have another question about that painting. And no, to the it should be a simpler one. You're pointing at I have the only... Bacana? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I have only seen this specific view of this tree once. And that was not in a state of living. Do you understand what I'm saying? I am not quite sure I follow, but that is merely Vakanath. I think there is more to it than just that. Well, when, when Luzan and I were born, Vakanath had yet to die. It was a long time before anything happened to her. This is the view from where I used to live back when I was uh, uh, also just a little tadpole. At least, that is how I remember it. Painted it myself? Do you like it? I like it. It is so... so lifelike, so similar to my only memory of it. I have never been to your Plurna, yet I know this view exactly. And the reason why is when I was knocked out cold, I met someone with pale purple skin, with pointy ears, with shiny blue eyes, and white hair that seemed to have power beyond belief power to create or manifest or change things and one moment I saw this person I could see this exact view that you have depicted here this specific view of Vakanath a tree that I have never seen in person before so I must ask you now do you know of any anyone matching that description I I am afraid I uh, afraid not. I'm sorry. I don't really know what you're talking about. You've never been on Plurna, but you've seen this tree when 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 out cold. Yes. Yes. When I was not among the living, not for the reason, of the choice of my own. And I'm not the only one. There are others here among us that have seen similar things, experienced similar things under the same conditions. Something is changing. Again, I don't know the individual you have described, but you are carrying pieces of Akanath with you, are you not? It's not that surprising that the power of the greatest, the strongest of Plurnan gods is manifesting in your minds through 
your mere, mere vicinity. So, uh, that is that. Do you believe this person to be some, what? Bodyguard, follower of Bakanath? He just shakes his head and says, I, I truly cannot say. Pontifex, do you, do you have any uh, ideas, any opinions? Uh, I think uh, when it comes to this uh, specific thing, it is more valuable to weigh the experiences of the man as opposed to the few. However, uh, recently, uh, outside when we did the magic thing I was hit pretty hard I uh he does recall this whole thing in the library right mm -hmm. I uh walk in the in the dark place and uh after illuminating it I found myself in a, a small circular a library of sorts very small uh, with windows uh, out which there was nothing but planes and the great tree looming uh, but I was alone there was no visitor it was cold and empty the books were uh, devoid of meaning they were in a text that shifted so maybe it is noteworthy that I did not see our little friend. And that they perhaps... Perhaps the fox and the goat are not special circumstances, at least not for long. That is my thought. I think that... Uh, things are going to get worse before they get better and I think it is going to get worse uh, quicker than we think that is what I think I was hoping to learn more by arriving here but it is not your fault I said too high expectations. Uh, I could teach you a few dragon chest openings. That is not for me. Exart looks a little bit disappointed. I <laughs> would not mind watching you paint while we are here. Oh, you have immediately brought the light back in his eyes. <laughs> he smiles widely and says, I, I, yes, yes, I, oh, I would love to have someone uh, watching my process. Usually I talk at Luzan as I, as I do. She has run out of things to say a long time ago. <laughs> well then, what are we waiting for? Come, let me show you. So after a day like this, what comes to mind? What do you wish to paint? Exarch begins to climb this is the steps to the floor above. He gives it just a few seconds of thought, uh, and then he says, The sea. Definitely the sea. I will follow. So... Uh, your party might have as much downtime in the cabin as you want. Um, you can do any particular activity you'd like, and you're, you're free to leave by whichever manner you choose, whenever you want to. Hey, Luzanne. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pip, you, you, you have Chase after Luzanne upstairs. Um... Only mere seconds after she she left, 
and you climb up the step the steps and you don't see her. The, in the living room, Arin is sitting behind the dragon chest board, uh, looking it over. He hasn't touched that position at all. Um, and when he sees you uh, climbing up and calling for Luzan, he points at the front door. Ah, I walk out the door. Hey, Luzan! You, you run outside. Um, Luzan! <laughs> the... There isn't, you can see really far at the moment. It's getting a little foggy up here, but you see the footprints in the snow that are How fresh. How did you get here. that far away? And <laughs> you start running up ahead and you begin to get the feeling that maybe you're being avoided. Why you catch up to her? Uh, my she went like around called. and, oh gosh, <laughs> she went around and she's like in, in front of the garden behind the cabin. Why run if you knew I would catch you? Is it a test? <laughs> I was giving you a chance not to come. Why? I just wanted to talk to you. The majority of your questions are not questions I can answer. And you will be disappointed. Oh. And I... I'm not adept at small talk. Oh. Can I try anyway? As long as you let me work in the meanwhile. Okay, what are you doing? She kneels down and starts tending to the plants. Oh. Oh, good. Tekka, Tekka's good with plants, too. Um... So, my name is Pip, this is Squeak, but you already knew that because you knew I'd introduce myself like that. Um, but you already know what I'm going to ask, so we can just skip that part and you can tell me the answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Austin, what was Pip going to ask? <laughs> <laughs> Pip was going to say verbatim. <clears throat> So a long time ago, Professor Pontifex promised to teach me some magic stuff, and then he, he like, immediately forgot about it. And so I wondered if you could teach me some things. Like, like, how did, how did that person spy through Pontifex's eyes? How did they do that? Is that something possible that I could do? Teach me, Professor. <laughs> so Pip says none of that, and he says that uh -huh. you guys can just skip to the answer. And Luzan says, as soon as you resume your pursuit of that wolf creature, the werewolf, you will find your answers. Okay. How you doing? As she warned you, she's pretty bad at doing small talk. Either bad or rocks? unwilling. <laughs> and Luzan sighs and points at the cabin and says, I have set one aside for you. <gasps> okay, I'll put one on the table for you. You already know which one I'm going to put. Do you like it? Exarch will. I've never met someone who can see the future before. How... When do I die? <laughs> <laughs> How do I die? My vision is limited to the next few minutes. Anything beyond that requires active concentration. Oh. Anything beyond a month from now would require me to cast magic for at least a whole day long. I can tell you he will still be alive in a month. Yes! I'll make note of that. Unless. Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> you have plot armor for a month. Enjoy! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I shall tell you something. I think oh. you're a liar. It immediately throws himself off. <laughs> <laughs> Let's test it! <laughs> I shall reveal something to you. The future 
is shy. It does not like to be seen. Whenever I see the future, I see a future where I did not look at the future. The future changes the moment I see it. Be careful with this information. You have the power to change your fate. Wow. That is so inspirational. Thank you so much. It is not You're... meant as inspiration. Now that you know that you'll be safe for the following month, you will start to being reckless in oh, no. your uh, incorrect belief that you have become invincible because of my future sight. Oh no. I You've not killed me. You. You've killed me. I'm dead. I'm gonna die now. I have not spoken with a child in a very long time, and I seem to have forgotten how to do so. That's okay. I think you're pretty cool. Nazgul's Tekka, though. Bye! Now she's gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> you turn around, you, your, your back faces her, and you return to the cabin. I picked you start up her looking, rock. <laughs> yeah, you start looking for a rock. <laughs> um, and you realize that uh, uh, there... You know, I mean, you, you you had seen a spot uh, um, like on top of a shelf with a stone on it. You just kind of... You had only seen it with like at the edge of your sight. You hadn't really registered that there was a rock there. But now that you walk into the cabin knowing that there is a rock waiting for you, you find it almost right away. Amazing. This particular rock, it looks like a pebble-shaped piece of ice. But when you reach for it, when you touch it, it's not cold at all. It's partially transparent, just like ice, with a slight bluish tinge to it. Whitish for the most part. It's a rock. Hip will leave behind one of the space rocks that he got from the moon. Um, by the time you have returned to the cabin, Exarch has settled in a corner and is showing Tekka his painting process. And when he sees you placing down a space rock uh, on the shelf, he smiles widely and says, Oh, that one looks really pretty. Aw, she said you'd like it. Oh, she's always right. Wow. Well, except the one time I specifically set off to prove her wrong, and then I ended up hurting myself. You guys are funny. <laughs> Exarc seems to just take it like fully like a compliment and seems happy about it. Uh, is there anything else anyone wants to do in the cabin today? Yes. And yeah, let's hear yes. it. Um, yes, at some point while people are kind of chilling, Virian wants to see if she can catch Pontifex. That's like alone, but like one on one conversation. Like not super secret, but just, you know, definitely going over to talk to him specifically. He, I, if I recall, he's eating the anchovies. The will spend the entirety of the day actively avoiding being alone with Virion. <laughs> <laughs> I was told to avoid this. <laughs> uh, but no, Sunny and Brooke uh, are probably done totally with the like, swimming pool. So there would be a moment a where... He's on fish still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Squeak has been dragged away by Pip, who really wanted to talk... Uh, uh, with Luzan, uh, even though he had to be dragged away screaming, uh, and he managed to steal one more entry for for the trip, uh, and with Sunny and Brooke off to dry themselves upstairs and maybe grab another snack, the the um, gigantic uh, warm bathtub is now empty, and the area around it is as well. So I think there's. I, like a minute where Virian's obvious like stress cleaning things, uh, kind of puttering around, looking All like the she's puddles going to, left yeah, by Brook and Sunny. Yeah, it's sort of like 
clean those up, not really knowing what to do with like the towel that she used. So she kind of puts it somewhere, then decides that's not the right spot for it. So she puts it somewhere else. It looks over at Pontifex, then like changes her mind, and then after a little bit, she just sort of, um, Professor Pontifex. Your food uh, thing. Uh, look, I know we didn't. It, I haven't exactly gotten off on the right foot. We don't always see eye to eye. But... I did just want to say that... I am genuinely very happy you found at least part of what you were looking for here. Hmm. Yeah. I thank you for the sentiment. I am honestly I didn't know what I would find here. I certainly didn't think I would find this. But uh, it's good. Everything is great. Thank you. Yeah, um if um so I, I know I don't are we ahead of schedule the whole hang gliding situation kind of put uh I don't know what to mark off in my calendar anymore. Um, what do you mean? If if we have a couple days and you want to stay, we we can stay. Uh, they they have the bell. I I can talk to them every day. There is a door that leads you from the North Tower. Virian, what is what is happening? I have spent nearly 400 years without them. I, it's not a big deal. I... I mean, I'm, I'm going to admit I had my moment down there, away from prying eyes. I do have a, a, an image to maintain. But, uh, you know, I, I said what I needed to say, and, and so did they. We hashed it out, and... Now we can go back to how it was. Maybe it's a Vidalkin thing. Uh, uh maybe, uh, cultural differences. Hmm. I, I just know if I were in your position and I got to see someone I had not expected to see in several hundred years face to face, I would take the time if I had it. You never know I when see. you're going to have another day. It's funny you say that, but, uh, sure. Um, I'm going to go upstairs. I think I heard Pip has another knife or something. Um, maybe, yeah. maybe you don't. Maybe, uh, maybe you let Tekka handle that. I, I get the feeling that you wouldn't approach me with this and and talk about this if you didn't want to talk about it. And I admit I'm not a, not exactly the most empathetic individual, but uh, you need to talk about something. I can assure you I am perhaps the least judgmental. Unless you are a gnome. <laughs> and you are well, we can talk about that part later. Um... But uh, if you need an ear, I don't have those either, but I can listen, very and it is fine. Sometimes you need to vent. Honestly, I'm not... not sure what... I've had a lot of things... going on the last few days. Um... Sure. I, I suppose I'm mostly just... It, it sounds like we're going to be in this for the long haul. Us, you and I, everyone. Uh, thought right. it might be uh, for the best if uh, maybe we could stop butting heads quite as much. Sure. I, uh... No, I, I understand what you're saying. And honestly, uh, the fault is, is mine. I can be a bit impulsive and uh, 
surprisingly emotional for a Vidalka. Maybe I get it from my father, come to find out. But uh, I've maybe been a little harsh on you and uh, blamed you for the whole Talek situation, which is not entirely deserved or warranted uh, whatsoever. Yeah, I, I've been a bit of a dick. Uh, I, I get it. But, uh, you know, this whole thing, coming here, talking to them, is uh, it put a lot of things into perspective. Maybe things that uh, I thought mattered. Maybe they don't. Not so much. But uh, what we are doing... The, the, the journey, the end goal, the people who are uh, with me on it, uh, they, they are more important than I give them credit. You are more important than I gave you credit for. It just took this uh, place. It took my parents for me to really realize that and for you to bring it up. So I uh, thank you. I, that... I, I understand I'm not a great person, but I will try to be. Uh, it... A little rough around the edges, but your heart's in the right place. That that might be the nicest thing you've ever said to me, all of that. And it might be the nicest thing I've ever said. <sighs> I will absolutely keep that in it. mind. Hmm. Ho okay. Hopefully, uh, sorry. Um, no, please, you. This is your uh, time. <laughs> I've had mine. Hopefully, just uh, going forward, we can... I like this better. Right, going forward, uh, everyone, including you, uh, has my full support. You have gotten me here, where uh, I, I may not have admitted where I wanted to go, but this is where I needed to be. This is where I had to wind up. This was the end goal for me. And you all have brought me here, not me. So I, I owe it to all of you, at the very least, to support to you all. And what I said to Tekka, I, I will repeat to you, regardless of the outcomes of uh, the tree, of the, the deities, the goats, my, my parents, all of it, regardless, I'm here for you all until your respective journeys end. Whatever you need. For however long it may be. Likewise. This is all we can do right now. Might as well make the best of it. I will make the best of it. Now, before you go up and stop the kid with the knife, you should have one of these fish. You are a boat person, after all. Uh, uh, yeah, I, actually, it's been a while since I've had anything like that. It's The smell kind of does bring me back a little bit. It is incredibly salty. Uh, Pontifex, I lived on a boat for 300 years. You think salty fish is not what I'm used to? No, I'm not talking you away. I am talking you up. Uh, it is delicious. Oh. <laughs> This is perhaps the most seasoned thing I've eaten in a while. It's just salt. Th thank you. I appreciate it. Cheers. There is a, there's more over in that cabinet. I know I alphabetized them. <laughs> <laughs> alphabetized <Wait>. them, bitch. Because <laughs> y'all took so long in the basement. <laughs> Why did the sailor does? <laughs> Did I put the fish in alphabetical order? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we are more alike than that. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, well. <laughs> then you know where to find it. Uh, no more of this. Okay.
All right, how about we call a break here? <laughs> Where did you? Where did you draw that from? <laughs> that came out of nowhere. <laughs> Listen, it was a, I wanted to say I know, but I don't know how to rationalize it. So I'm going to say the first thing that comes to my mind. Yes, of course, I know the fish are in the cabinet. I alphabetized them. That was really. <laughs> well, thank you for that. What's the note? The quote needs a context. Yeah. I I didn't have time. The, the life is more than that. Can't have all the time. <clears throat> okay. There's yes. more fish in that cabinet over there. I know. I alphabetized. <laughs> Listen, anchovies come first, and then <laughs> sardines are towards the end. Sardines come pretty late. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> the yellow tail is at the very end. Uh, right next to the zebra fish. We don't eat those, though. <laughs> the opposite end of the bass. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh. Um, if there is anything else you want to do in the cabin, think about it. Let me know when we come back. Um, otherwise, how many, we might be how ready long to move are we on. here? As long as However we want, you want? Yeah. <laughs> Really, though? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think need the a question number. is, how long does Pontifex want to say, I think? We yeah. got here. Pontifex yeah. is ready Presumably to leave. Okay. several so... days ahead of schedule. <laughs> so if you want, you can leave tomorrow. I could get <laughs> so much work done on these po this freaking polymorph potion. <laughs> <laughs> that I've been working on for months. <laughs> <laughs> it takes 80 hours. <laughs> yeah. All right, pick a number right now. Uh, Exarch and Luzan will let you stay. And mm. you also need to pick how you want to leave the mountain. Yeah, the, yeah the that's the thing. Is, uh, the quick way down, uh, which is the, the Pontifex Express. If we can find a really looming cliff, we can get down <laughs> pretty quick. Uh, otherwise the door to just leave but we also want to go under the mountain uh, so it sounds like we're going down the mountain all that content we skipped we might not find a way around it unless you have some other rock that's just going to make like a mile long gangplank off the top of this thing i mean we could do the the pip flies really far horizontally away from the mountain then we all plummet until we feather fall at the bottom oh method. true true and uh I mean, we do still have to go under the mountain. Yeah, so I think the next the next logical place is we have to get back down the mountain. If we're going to shenanigans our way back to the very bottom, that's one thing. Or we make our way down the mountain. We shenanigans, absolutely. <laughs> shenanigans <laughs> is usually the We move. would never. You know, what if, what if we... Okay, we do have the leaf for Arn's Tower. We have that thing to deal with. Uh... But it may, what if we planted the, the tower into the side of something and got the tower to grow out horizontally? Okay. Uh, I need to use the restroom. Uh, this is like the official moment when the break begins. Yeah, and you guys <laughs> just talk about horizontal towers all you want. Uh, Can we call it something else? Horizontal tower? <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I will be right back. I have to also use the bathroom. Okay. The White House. See you in a little bit. <laughs> <See ya. laughs> She's off to alphabetize her moments. So, let me bring back okay. the... 36 out of 80 which... hours. <laughs> uh, but... After Arn realizes you're reading his notes... Um... Uh, I lost my music. Yeah. Um... So you'll you'll remember that you can't take things out of the tower of Arian's tower. Mm -hmm. uh, so like this is your own copies of his notes that you made so that you could take them out. Um, and there's like bits and pieces missing because of that, and you hadn't expected not to be able to access the tower at any point. So you didn't make mm -hmm. like a full copy. Um, so that's part of the struggle as you pip sit down today and uh, you're trying to get. Uh, um, 
you're trying to develop these potions. And as everybody's wandering around looking for something to do, um, Aaron is in the living room with you and he realizes that you're trying to work with potions. Um, actually, it shouldn't be this music. It should be... No, this is fine. We can leave. <laughs> yeah, this is good. <laughs> uh, I interrupted myself, myself mid-sentence, but I already know this is what you're player, doing. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, he comes over and he looks over your shoulder. And then um, with a slightly paler hand than uh, the first time you met him, as this curse is beginning to settle back in, uh, he points at your notes and says... Is there any chance I could perhaps help you with this? I don't know. It's pretty complicated stuff. He raises an eyebrow and he waits a few seconds. And when Pip doesn't seem to realize, Arn clears his throat and says, Well, <clears throat> I happen to be very familiar with this one specifically. Oh. Really? Yeah, I have notes just like these in my tower. Huh. I know. What a coincidence. Uh, here, let, uh, help me. Let, let me help you out. I'm trying to figure this one out. And I've got some of the ingredients for it. But... I just don't know the process. And, like, do you know how much money I have to spend every time I try to make this thing work? So much money. And, like... Then instead of uh, experimenting, perhaps I could just tell you how it works. Oh. Yeah, okay. For one, you're supposed to use a different shape of bottle for this one. It's actually quite important. Oh. And then he sits down next to you on the couch and you start going over that. And uh, as I a mentioned, you're in the break. Dodecahedron. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as I mentioned during the break, uh, Aaron is going to just double your um, the amount of time that you you are able to spend on this. Oh. Um, w is anyone else doing anything particular during this amount of time? During these Nothing days? that has to be specifically addressed, but just okay. after they're, when they're going to spend a full day there, uh, when they get up from the long rest, uh, Virion's going to swap out her mace's tool proficiency for a dragon chest proficiency. Uh. Ha! And, <clears throat> well, A, definitely let Exarch teach her some stuff, and... I don't know if Pontifex wants to round. Exarch He's definitely better than her, but she can play. Exarch and Luzan have an hourglass that is meant specifically for quick dragon chess games. Uh, so the moment Exarch realizes anyone is any interest in a, in a dragon chess board, he writes down the current position of the game that he and Luzan have, have been playing, and then he sets the pieces back in the starting positions and brings out the hourglass so you can have, like, instead of a week-long game, you can play multiple games in the same day, but it's it's a very different kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, some purists might be opposed to this, but yeah, you're, you're able to play. <laughs> speed dragon chess. Yeah, speed <laughs> speed dragon chess. Um, can I have opposed the rules? Yeah. Uh, any specific skill or just proficiency? Like skill bonus, like enter. You like have swapped to your to a dragon chess tools proficiency. Uh, game proficiency. Yep. Uh, so yeah, it's intelligence plus proficiency. Okay, okay. Oh no! <laughs> wow! Wow! Is there a profi is there a proficiency plus four? Esther's a little distracted, huh? <laughs> What's a proficiency Maybe. bonus right now? Is it four? Our proficiency bonus is four, four. now. You oh, guys wow. roll nine, yeah. 
Like, that seems really high. Yeah. Yep. Is Pontifex one of those people who does not believe in speed dragon chess? That you're supposed to take at least a day per move instead of only being limited to like one minute? Is that what's going on? Uh, I don't think he considers it to be dragon chess. I think he considers it to be its own game, uh, of mm -hmm. which he is no less competitive at. Uh, he would <laughs> equally uh, intend to thrash people at that same game. Uh but for some reason or another, his uh, his play is very, very sloppy. So, you see, you can't play regular dragon chess on a ship because the pieces go everywhere, so you have to play it really fast. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so I got good at this this variant. Oh, yeah. Me too, you meant Magnus sense. already. Perfect <laughs> sense. Hey, hey, well done. Hey, very impressive. You know, if you ever want to go, I know you have a game going with Brooke right now, but next round. Uh, yeah, yes, of, of course. Uh, once the game with uh, Brooke reaches its, uh, or it doesn't necessarily have to be. Uh, you don't have to wait for that one to be done if you want to play again any time, especially this speed variant. That is uh, pretty easy, but if, if you want to have a, a long game i'm uh, i'm always available i'll make sure to take you up on it uh, just give me like a, a day's warning um so i can think on strategies <laughs> you can cheat it's not cheating uh, that's what uh what my mother says if if i w look if i wanted to cheat i would just swap the pieces If I wanted to lose, I would look away from the board or not to memorize all of their positions. I think I could pull one over on you. Oh, not clearly. now, because you're... you're, you're well, you're expecting... So you didn't see me swap the pieces earlier. That's what you're saying. You know what? Maybe we should play this game later. We should. <laughs> uh, or, you know, uh, play Brook. You have both bested me now, it seems. A brook would probably be down. Yeah. Like a tournament bracket. <laughs> <laughs> I will uh, I will await you in losers. <laughs> <laughs> um Okay. Anything else that needs to be roleplayed? Uh Pontifex is specifically uh uh, taking more time to uh, to just spend time alone with uh, with XR. Uh, nothing like super important, but just, uh, specifically trying to spend more alone time with him and uh, just literally small talk. Yeah, playing catch, like shooting. <laughs> he would take you to like chop thing. wood outside. Uh, yeah, excellent. And and the professor's absolutely you know doing it with. Uh, with magic or something, <laughs> uh, you know, changing the damage type of a spell into like slashing damage. I'm sure I have something in here that can do slashing. Uh, I know I can do bludgeoning, so I can just bash wood into pieces. Uh, whatever, <laughs> just doing creative magic stuff and sundering wood in a in a very bastardized way that a lumberjack wouldn't appreciate. But all the same, and like you know, introducing. Oh no! I have to spend the time to get Seraphis back. Uh, that would happen. <laughs> the money and get the um, cat back because she got blown mm -hmm. up. Um, on the on the evening of the first day, like when you guys arrived and you were getting ready to set up for to go to sleep, you found that there was uh, a an amount of magical components that are exactly the type and the amount for summoning your your trust in back. Mm, naturally. Do we have to chant her name until the ritual's over too? Uh, no, she knows her name by now. <laughs> if, if you want to, I won't stop you. Seraphis Vas Habu La no. Quinoa. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're getting there. You know, this is the first step to learning. What? 
<laughs> it's not important. Huh? It's a Vidalkin thing, you wouldn't get it. <laughs> huh? Correct. Anyways, poof, cat. Cat was back. <laughs> and yeah, he's been he's been playing around and I think Seraph has, has found her spot. Uh I don't know where that is, but there's a spot, and it's very clearly her spot. Uh, as that is where she lounges away most days. Right in front of the fireplace. Perfect. And no one else is allowed to sit in front of the fireplace. No one else. That's hers. But yeah, he 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 plays proverbial catch with his uh with his dad in the in the spare time. Good. <laughs> you know what? You will get to learn um like he has asked a lot of questions about your life, <laughs> but, and spell. you finally. <laughs> <laughs> you want to play catch? I'll show you how the how wizard plays catch. <laughs> you, I need to teach you catapult and shield. Uh, you finally get to to know a little bit about his life, and shockingly, um, he and Luzan actually met. Uh, in uh, uh, Gnomish territory. That's how they, they met one another. Uh, they both have lived among gnomes for uh, for an amount of time of their lives. Luzan especially, uh, the longest. He's like telling me your war stories. <laughs> how horrifying it must have been. <laughs> he talks fondly about that time. <clears throat> he tells you he used to have... Uh, an interest when he was really young into machinery and he went to study with uh, with the gnomes because they uh, that was one of the best places to go for that while Luzan, uh, she was actually born on the eastern side of Plurina, but because she was born with innate arcane magic she and her family faced a lot of, per uh, of persecution and uh, um, that's why they moved instead to the west um and they ended up uh, uh that's how they, they ended up there and the luzan actually grew up uh, uh mm. mainly surrounded by gnomes so they both actually have like fond things to say about them and this is all pre-war as well the professor will show his gunshot wound <laughs> his, his memento of his time with the gnomes. Oh yikes! Um, yep. Exarch would also ask about the the scar he would have felt on the back of Pontifex's head, but he's like oh, gentle yeah. about it, and he's he's yeah, ready Pontifex to back off if Pontifex doesn't seem willing. It. No, it's like an old enough story for him uh, that he wouldn't feel comfortable sharing with people he doesn't know. But uh, suddenly, he feels like he's known these people for a very long time, uh, and yeah, he just he said, talks about it very matter of factly. Of you know, whenever he was a, a young young boy, and the other village kids don't know what Vidalkan are, and in a way of bullying him when they found mm -hmm. out that they breathe through their skin, uh, submerged him in vinegar. And gave him very, very bad chemical burns and nearly drowned him. This would probably be the Ooh, only time in your entire stay with Exarch and Luzan where you would see your father mad. Visibly upset, trying not to appear. Constantly failing to keep his emotions inside. Oh, uh, don't, don't worry. Uh, they are uh, long dead by now. <laughs> they died a very long time ago if they had kids which I doubt it because yeesh but if they did they're <laughs> also dead by now <laughs> oh, yeah. and I can attest that uh, they they amounted to nothing it's damn the failures <laughs> oh, they, they, they peaked in their childhood we'll say <laughs> yeah, he's vicious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's just, <laughs> I mean, that's that's good for Pontifex. 
just to take pleasure <laughs> in out living is. Oh yeah, don't worry. Just... All of my books, everyone <laughs> they've known and ever loved, they're all dead, and all of their <laughs> descendants are also dead. It's fine. They're a history that everyone has forgotten about, and no one remembers their name. <laughs> Exark has a moment where he says, y "You didn't kill them, did you?" Oh no, no, no! I did okay, it okay. on fireball until fairly right. recently. <laughs> Yay, bonding time. <laughs> this is just him having a loose hand moment. Yeah. What would what would your mother do? And it's just heads popping. <laughs> uh Taika. On uh, um on the party's second day of uh, staying here in the in this cabin, uh, there would be a moment when you are approached by Sunny. Um who looks a little bit awkward as she comes over and looks around and um, takes advantage of the fact that this would be a moment where nobody is around, everyone else is off doing their own things, and she she clears her throat in a way that's really not necessary. You've definitely seen her coming. You're looking at her as she tries to get your attention. She looks around again and she says, Can I... um?" talk to you for, for, for a couple minutes. I, I don't know how long it's going to take. I think it's going to be a couple minutes. I'm bad at this. Maybe it's going to be ten. Speak. Okay. Um. I, I probably should have thought about how I was going to put this. It's just I don't really know who else to talk to. Because well Pip is a kid. A Pontifex doesn't like me. Uh, I, I haven't known Viren for a long time, and, and, and same with uh, Arin. And, and, um... Well, I'm not gonna talk about this with Brooke, because but the part, part of what I need is to figure out how to talk to Brooke about this. So, um... Think you can I help me? It. What is on your mind? Okay, good, great. So, um, I have spent a lot of time recently being unable to do anything and just watching what, what Brooke was doing, and it gave me a lot of time to think about things. And now that I'm back, um, I'm enjoying it. I, I, I enjoy being alive and uh, going around and doing things and eating food and, and sleeping and talking, and I... I'm starting to worry that maybe this path that I'm on, that I was on with, with Brooke, that maybe it's not fulfilling anymore. Uh, we, we made a promise, him and I, not, not to ever fight for another country or uh, another group, another faction that would inevitably let us down. So that that's why we um, decided to be to become phantom guards instead because they, they they're supposed to be independent mercenaries. We we train, we get our magic, and then we go and we take the missions that we want and we help the people that we want on our own terms. And uh, I was excited about that, and then they betrayed us too, and they got me killed. And I'm starting to think that maybe I just don't want to fight anymore uh, at all Th that maybe leo had the right idea i mean he he's like me he got a second chance after he died he came back and he he became a priest he stopped fighting a and maybe he's onto something you know a am i making any sense you are but I do not know if that is alone the answer you seek. You have been betrayed time and time again and been used to fight. But now you can choose what to fight for. But can what to I? Not fight for. I mean, I, I don't know anything else. I was born towards the end of the war, but it's it's really all that I've ever known. 
and, I, and I'm good at it. I'm good at fighting and I'm proud of having served my country and having helped a lot of people. And that's, that's all I know how to do. I mean, how do you find a new purpose when, when you give up your, your old one? You, if you can feel it inside yourself, that there's something that is missing. One way is to give up everything you know and start walking. What do you feel inside yourself? Is there one thing that you are longing for? One thing you wish to try and never have? I don't know. I feel... I feel... Restless. I wanted to climb trees and go running and talk to people. I, I hate what we're doing right now. I'm just sitting around. I mean, it's it's pleasant, it's calm, but I want to be out there, seeing new sights, doing things. Mm. But I, that's not a thing. Um, I'm. I guess I'm just. You have seen fun. glimmer by being with Brooke and us, right? Yeah. Glimmer is someone who has been able to see the world and meet new people. That is one way. Uh, I Another don't... way. Uh, but... Mm. Mm, okay, go on, go on. There are ways you could travel this continent. Learn about it, helping people. Not as any phantom, but as you wish. Not affiliated with anyone. You can build your own reputation, relationships. Have alliances, friends. Make a difference. I'm on my journey to find my own belonging. You could do the same. Okay. I, I don't know why I expected you to give me a, an answer like, uh, here is your purpose, and then I'd be like, yes, that's it, but it, uh, instead it's more like, I've, I've got to figure it out on my own, and I suppose that's perfectly logical and valid. I guess I'll be sticking with you guys for a while longer and try to figure things out. When you see something that speaks to you, you should tell me like food does or more than that mm. you could become a cook there is an appeal to cooking that's exploring a good idea land. I'll think about it I'll consider it definitely top 10 activities <laughs> it brings people together there's something to food that none other do I going to tell Brooke that I don't feel like fighting anymore? He might feel similarly. You don't know until you tell him. Yeah, what if he doesn't, though? I mean, that's how we met. We were fighting. We were soldiers together. That's how we made all of our best friends. Brooke means a lot to me, and I... Well, I, I really value our friendship, and I am worried that I might be ruining things if I take a different path. What, what if I don't see him ever again? A friendship is something alive, not defined by your past alone or together. It will survive. As you and him 
and together we will change. Thanks, How Tekka. Is that? Okay, yeah, I, I will. I have one question. Ooh, let's hear it. I'll give you the best answer. <laughs> it is... I did not know what to expect when you would return. But there is so much about Brooke that I do not know, do not understand, and I do not think he is willing or even capable of telling. I have only known him for a time. You have seen him for so much longer. Has has he changed? Is he still as you remember him? I have remembered him. He he is still very similar to how he was the first time we met. But um a little bit more sad. I'm not very good at describing things. I think both of us got tired of a lot of things. And he still wants to do good. I've always... We always all wanted that. And for a while that just meant uh, fighting for a country. I guess that shifted. He... Definitely got a lot sadder, but but recently, when he met Leo again, I think I think he got a little happier. Perhaps he does need you to tell him. He needs a reminder that there can be a different spark. that a life can be about building, not destroying. Oh, you're, you're suggesting that I talk to him. I, I think I think I did say at the start that I'm not very good at talking. We could talk together. But yes, I'm not... now that's an idea. Oh. I'm just going to drag you along next time I, I I need to talk to him and you can be like there. Fine. I cannot promise, but I will be there. Great. Okay, awesome, perfect. Now I have a lot of pent up energy. I'm going to go outside and cut down a tree. <laughs> Would you like a treat? You, uh, <laughs> you know, I will join you. That sounds good about now. You ever punched a tree in half? <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen a man punch a tree in half? <laughs> Would you like to? <laughs> With Tekka and Sunny's current strength score, I think they both could punch down a tree. Probably. One after the other. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think Tekka will definitely join Sunny uh, in getting a tree down. Okay. Um, because has plan. Bad plan, but it's plan. <laughs> it, it turns out that the day, just the day before, uh, Pontifex and Exarch had already gotten a bunch of firewood. And so by the time you guys bring, like, just a literal tree, you just bring the entire tree. Because neither of you brought an axe. So you just bring the entire mm -hmm. tree in front of the cabin. Um, and you leave it there <laughs> for, for them to figure out what to do with it. Uh, Sunny, definitely in a much better mood after your conversation and after the, the tree has been just uprooted from, from the ground. Um, everybody else now has an obstacle directly in front of the door whenever they need to leave the cabin. It's just the tree that is there. Um, yeah, I think, I think Tech is going to spend this last day um, starting the work on a new attachment for the core staff. Um, and he's going to start like trying to strip the bark out of like half of one of the trees. 
uh, and try to have like this bark surface at the end of it. What kind of tool are you trying to make? The uh, attachment. Uh, yeah, what, what essentially I have in mind is like a bark umbrella. So it's like a curved surface that you could just like attach to an end of the core staff and it would be like a shield for weather and for sun. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't see why not. What tools are you using? Uh, so I think it's a combination. I can find it here. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's a combination of the handsaw, and then I think it's like using the block and tackle to like pry it off. Uh, using also like the other end of the hammer. Like, yeah, it's a bunch of different tools being used here. Remember a long time ago in Simleon when Tekka bought specifically a hinge? Yes. You could <laughs> you could actually make like the umbrella open and close. Oh my god. So yes, it's easier. Let's do it. <laughs> so Please. it's easier to just store it away. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This so is like a this is the umbrella. payoff, like fifty the sessions. Purpose later. has been fulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> the prophecy has come to completion. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, so that's um, his little project for the day. Yeah. I would say you can get it like about halfway done during your, your stay um, in mm. the cabin. That sounds good. And it will require just a tiny bit more work. A uh, tiny bit meaning an extra eight hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Is that everything from everyone? Good to move on? <laughs> I think yeah. so. Yep. Lovely. Then the following day, this is your third day effectively of being here. Um, when you all wake up and you have, uh, you have breakfast, you'll also find that there is set aside for all of you essentially lunch boxes, <laughs> uh, rations for all of you uh, that have just been like of um, food that will last for a long time uh, a lot of dried meat and a lot of dried fruits and nuts um they all come in a little handwritten note from exarch with just for for every one of these rations it's just a little like encouraging message of like good luck you can do this that, that kind of thing i love them <laughs> um so you can all add the each of you five rations to your inventory. And during the days you were in the cabin, you didn't have to eat your rations, so you, if you counted them down, you have to put them back. So, so how many? Say it again. You're, you're, yeah, you're receiving five. <clears throat> um... We we didn't say that it explicitly happened, but at some point somebody would have like spoken the password in front of the um the nowhere mm. door and activated it. Uh the mechanical raven that is still with you would have flown like on top of it and sort of like pecked it, pecked the stone frame of the door from above. Um you say the password, uh and the next time you try to push the door open, you can see the inside of the Inower Tower. Um, so you know that it's activated and it's working, but that's not the um, the way you're going. So what's the plan to get off the mountain? Are we cheesing this? Speedrun strats. You already cheesed it on the way up, so... How does Sunny feel? <laughs> oh, Sunny... Sunny is waiting to hear about how you're gonna go, and the moment you bring up flight, she just immediately does a little, like, the no motion with her index finger and says, no, 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 I can, I can take the door, I can walk down a mountain, uh, any of that, we, I don't have to fly. I can wait for you at, at, at the tower. <laughs> I'm sure you don't need me where you're going. Brooke would be like poking her on the side and making fun of her. And telling her that she has to come. 
mean, where, where are we going? You remember that werewolf whose family we killed? Yes, that you neglected to tell me about until he was trying to kill us a second time, I remember. Yeah, that one. Um, the witch that he serves is under the mountain. And we think that's where the werewolf will be, too. And also, there's some ingredients I need to get down there. Um, and maybe there's some metals that we need to give uh, Mr. Tinheart. So there's a few reasons we should probably go down there. Aside from flying again, I'm assuming just climbing is going to be the quickest way down. Jory doesn't know how long it took us to get to the mountain from leaving the tower. Uh, two and a half days of just uh, just from climbing from the base of the mountain to the top through the staircase. Jeez. Uh, from Hinart's tower to get here with Arin's assistance and with Runamela keeping you guys safe, I think it was uh, about a week. So down is easier than up at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's really pretty simple if you think about it. I turn into a really big bird. I hold most of you in my claws or my back or my beak. And then I fly as far as I can until I can't anymore. And then we plummet about 500 to 1,000 feet or so before the professor makes us slow fall right at the last minute. Sunny definitely just, like, she holds up her hands and says, nope. No, 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 no. All in favor? No. <laughs> Let's make this plan C. Right, I mean, in the event that we find that the way down is too tedious or taxing, or we find a good overhang, or in any of that, uh, sure, but... Uh, Maybe it would be wise to uh, find out what this whole curse business is or is about. Uh, we know what it's about. Horrible, dreadful nightmares. I mean, how bad could they be? Pretty bad. Most people who come here die, so they say. Okay, yeah, that would be pretty bad. Uh... You know, I, I leave it to, uh, to you all. I, I am the reason we are up here in the first place, so I, I don't think I should entirely decide the way down either. Arin is of the opinion that the quickest you guys get down the, ma the mountain, the better it is. And he has faith in, in Pontifex's magic to prevent you from guys from going splat. And then on the opposite end of that opinion is Sunny. <laughs> there is one e issue with this splat plan, and that is, uh, I can only stop, uh, five. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> only five. Uh, uh, Seraphis can fly. Uh, Pip can also fly to an well, extent. I can just do that once a day. But then uh, I suppose launch the rest of us and then you just simply fly your way down. <laughs> but the, so I'm the one. I think Oren would be fine if it, it, <laughs> the situation called for it. As much as I don't wish to watch my friend splash into the floor, <laughs> I, I think something tells me you would be okay. I but would the, not be okay. Well, uh, something tells me you would be you no, don't listen to whatever oh. that is. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe this something is wrong. But so the five would be uh, me, obviously, and uh, number two would be I suppose Aaron. Uh, number three would be uh, Tekka, and number four would be Jory or Avery. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm uh, going. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the alphabetizing fish thing still. I'm sorry. I feel like that was a joy moment and not a virian moment. So. 
<laughs> but that's what I say. And number five, it would be Brooke, which would leave a uh, Sunny. Uh, skid onto the side of the mountain. All right. What if? Yes. What if we great idea. I will just r slide down on a tree trunk all the way down the bottom of the mountain. That is actually unironically another plan. Is we just construct uh, like a toboggan and. Uh, <laughs> what if we compromise and? What if we compromise and I just fly us back to the stone staircase? But like it halfway there? down it. Yeah, of course it's still there. It's there forever. I have remade this world to my liking. <laughs> well then, I suppose, actually, then if we get to the staircase, uh, myself and, and if you can leap from the side of it first, <laughs> and then after I'm at the bottom, I can simply wait and try to catch you with my magic. <laughs> <laughs> Try to <That's> actually. <laughs> well, it, it okay. The window is about the sixty feet before you hit the ground. Is the soonest I can do it. So the fall would be fairly abrupt, but uh, it has some tolerance. It's not like I have you know less than a moment. I have like at least half of a moment to catch you. Sunny is burying her face in her arms. Sunny, you can just go down the staircase. Yeah, or that. Yeah, yeah. It's not like a big deal. I would rather do that. If one person's going down the staircase, why don't all of us go down the staircase since we'll be waiting at the bottom for them regardless? Oh, no, I'm not walking down the staircase. <laughs> so if, <laughs> if you want, I can wait for you at the bottom, but... Uh, Anyone who doesn't wish to do the staircase, uh, up to four other people, I guarantee the Pontifex Express is safe. And it is nostalgic. It goes back to how most of us first met. Most of us didn't trust you then. <laughs> and so why do you not now? What, I, I, if I could do it then, I can definitely do it now. It, uh, admittedly, the scale is a bit bigger. This isn't just like... And the leaping down the elevator shaft. This is from the top of the highest peak of Ladaria, but uh, not so different. All right, let's what do is, it. I am jumping and have no intentions on walking down the staircase. So, everybody got their lunch boxes. <laughs> <laughs> All five. Exarch is like distributing them, making sure everybody gets a <laughs> little slick you know. finger sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a Mr. Mom, and I love it. He has to make up for Lausanne. <laughs> <laughs> Exarch is who makes this house a home. Aaron, <laughs> you ready to make me a speedy boy? Odd way of putting it. The name of the spell is Haste, but, but yes. What? You have names for your spells? All spells have names. You didn't... Wait, All spells what? have a name. Really? Right, you that you haven't why it's had called a spell. It is composed of letters. <laughs> <laughs> you have not had uh, a proper education in spell casting. We need to remedy that. Uh, Granny taught me pretty well, but whatever you say. We shall have lessons every day from now on. Oh wow. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm and then gonna do Arin, the... He leans towards Pontifex and says, Professor, I have no idea how to teach anything to anyone. You need to help me. Uh, you are come to the right person. I, I know I have. Birdify! <laughs> but I, it, it is, just it runs out of the cabin. All of his verbal components is just absolute gibberish, but it still works. Oh, to Pip. Sorry, I thought I was talking to Warren. I was like, what, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> it's it, it's interesting that all of Pip's verbal components is just nonsensical yeah. <laughs> gibberish. There are no letters in these spells. 
<laughs> These are not words. <laughs> He's not spelling them out. He speaks from the heart, and it happens. And it's a little frustrating as a wizard. <laughs> You're all beginning to gather outside of the cabin, each of you finally leaving the warmth and comfort uh, of this building behind. Uh, Pontifex, you feel a hand on your shoulder, and so you turn back ex expecting for Exarch to give you a hug, but the person who holds you in her arms is Luzan. It's very... Um, it's very sudden, and there's a lot of strength in this hug. It's it's almost unpleasant because of it. It's a little bit too tight. But Exar chuckles and he puts like his arms around the two of you, hugging both of you at once. This is nice. The professor will also hug. This is just a very damp hug. Eventually, Luzan is trying to, like, wiggle herself out of this double hug that she has gotten into. And because Exarch is holding both of you in his arms, she can't. And it takes her, like, all the... All to, all the way to the point where she has to vocalize that she's trying to back away for, for Exarch to finally <laughs> let I would go. like to leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is enough, please. And, you have 400 uh, years to make up. She doesn't say anything to this. She just goes back to maintaining her neutral expression. She <laughs> turns around and goes to sit behind the dragon chessboard where it has been reset to its starting position after all the games that have been played in the last few days. Um, Exarch just gives you a second hug, taking the, the, the chance, and then pats you on the back and says... We'll try to make up for it. I, I know we can't. Not really, but... We can. We thought we couldn't. Just uh, remember to uh, stay in touch. As I said before, I can uh, be easily distracted and lose track of time. But uh, you have nothing else to do, so... You know. Every evening, me. right on time. Every evening. Now go. Your friends are waiting for you. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, goodbye. Uh, dead. Goodbye. Don't, uh, don't walk off. Son. You walk off. You don't hear the door closing behind you. Exarch watches as your group <laughs> steps away. He waves at anyone who might turn back at any moment to see. He's always on the door on, on the doorway. He remains there until the cabin is out of sight. So your plan. What are you what are you setting in motion? Uh, Pip is casting Birdify. Mm-hmm. You're Birdifying yourself. Uh, and is going to collect everyone. Get hastied. And, uh, zoom towards the stone staircase. I guess trying to go, like, as far down towards it as possible before the mm -hmm. spell runs out you have to like go around before you can see it again and it is still there you see its outline far off in the distance um you're trying to get to the circus just like you guys got off of it yeah everybody on pip uh-huh okay including sunny uh-huh all right. Um, but he lets Sunny pick how she wants to be held this time. <laughs> she doesn't pick. She insists that she's going to take the door. Oh. <laughs> oh. So Brooke has to physically just lift her and put her on the back of the bird.
Yep. Once everybody's Ar collected, Aaron is the one who ends up in the talons this time around. It's fine. He'll heal. He has to hold on to his hat. <laughs> And he taps the giant claws that are holding him in in uh, in its grip, and uh, um, tape the bird is very fast. Yum. Whoa! All right, that's a very interesting circle you made over here. <laughs> Thank you. I worked hard on it. Uh, much like before, it takes two full castings of haste to cover the, the distance between the mountain and the staircase. This time, you're gliding downward. Uh, so the speed isn't that necessary, but it does help with limiting the actual amount of time you're carrying so much weight on you. Uh, this flight for more than a few minutes would otherwise be utterly unsustainable for you, especially upward. Uh, downward, you're just gliding. Um, how are you landing on those steps? Uh, how how much space is there between, like, the... between the... Uh, how to say this? The spirals. <laughs> like, vertically? Yeah. Oh god. Okay, so they are 15 feet wide, and they all go around, like, a center. I guess it depends on the angle that they spin at. Yeah, like, I'm really bad is there at enough space between the steps to, like, go in between and drop people off? Right now you're a huge sized bird, right? Or is it large? I, I forgot to you make the fat it, block. It was Ooh. like, yeah, you said it was like... Treading the line between the two. You okay. Um, if I didn't straight up say huge, then I think you'd be able to make it. It's more that you don't really have like a landing, like a long enough uh, space for you to comfortably land. Like you get there and mm. you have to stop very immediately. You can probably just fucking fling Aaron onto the stairs. Yeah, that's the thing. No. You can just go, like throw a good amount of people onto it. <laughs> it is going to be as gentle as he can with his okay. limited intelligence. All right, Roll. Tekka and Brooke and Sunny at least are very like tossable. <laughs> Honestly, I think everyone's pretty tossable, save for the professor and probably just Pip, and he's a bird. So. Wait for this problem to somehow, somehow be solved by um, Tekka's staff. Maybe if... How do we involve a hinge in this problem? <laughs> mm. he, he holds it out like behind the bird as, as like uh, an air uh, air friction device. <laughs> I was thinking the fishing equipment, the fishing tackle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Would be funny. Okay, so... Um, with the staircase like being here, um, like like this and whatever. Yeah. My God, I'm really bad at drawing this. I don't know that what this great. hairy stick is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you beautiful. glide downward, and and uh, um, you're beginning to slow down as much as you can. And essentially, you can hover next to the staircase, but you're constantly going down um, a little faster than you would like. And people have to um, hop down. And everybody would jump at a different floor, essentially. That's terrifying. Um, so... So you want me to make, like, a charisma saving throw? N no. <laughs> um, let me get uh, this real quick. This is... Uh, I hope it doesn't take too long. <clears throat> Trying to think so, if I've ever seen a, how many charisma 20 plus saving two. throws I've seen. <clears throat> this, is a plus two. this is a dexterity, uh, a dexterity check to see like how, uh, how slow your descent can be as you're trying to just hover, hover in place. Fourteen. Okay. <clears throat> uh, it's a little bit faster than anyone would have liked. The ideal would have been complete stop, but 
you physically can't. There's too much weight on you. Uh, and it's hard to focus because Sunny's been screaming this entire time. <laughs> um, so one at a time, people begin to hop onto the steps. Uh, so everybody roll. Um, a long distance is, acrobat uh, is athletics, right? Making a, a jump. Yeah, jumping is basically um, always athletics. <laughs> okay. So everybody roll an athletics check. Um, Sid, you, you took Brooke, right? Yeah. Okay, roll one for Brooke as well. Can do. And uh, uh, I got, I got Sunny, please. Mm -hmm. Plus ten. This is probably oh. fine. <laughs> 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 well. Uh, I said it ironically. So. <laughs> well. One at a time. Wow, look at all of you people. Look at you go. I'm very proud of each and every the, one of you. The first person to make the jump is Virion. And Virion actually hits one of the steps with a foot as she's jumping. And so she ends up falling onto the steps face first uh really close to missing the jump and for a moment her heart skipping a beat but she makes it um following her tekka with absolute ease lands gracefully it's like he has done this before plenty of times somehow uh perhaps all that like tree climbing that he likes to do he's used to to jump from one spot to another without being able to actually like um, build up a running distance. Um, and then Pontifex says, <laughs> as what he said before, he seems confident he's gonna do it. Um, he stepping off of a giant birdie motion doesn't give you um, a whole lot of grip with your feet. Um, you do the thing where you try to jump forward, but your feet slip. And you essentially just flip yourself directly forward and fall straight down, completely missing the staircase. Oh no, this is totally on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Hip is going to Hip is going See you to at the uh, zoom down in, in bird form. Everybody else has dropped off, right? <laughs> uh if <clears throat> Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, if you want, then yeah, you you all are very much not worried <laughs> about the professor just plummeting to uh, what for most people would be uh, their certain death. <laughs> you almost wonder if he did it on purpose uh, to <laughs> avoid the staircase that he specifically did not want to climb. Um... The uh, the next one is uh, is Sunny's right the twenty one. Mm. Um, Sunny, after seeing the professor plummeting, she just clings onto the back of the bird, almost uh, almost pulling like on, on his neck and beginning to strangle him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um and uh, the last one is Brooks, right? Yep. So Brooke essentially jumps off the bus with her um holding her hand and doing this together at the same time and uh and it takes like a, a full minute to get her to finally build up the courage to make the jump but once once she does um the two of them safely landing on the staircase at this point you are very much further back down compared to where virion and teka have <laughs> Have landed and they're already beginning to climb down to meet the rest of the party. Uh, I am missing Arin, who, without the professor to possibly catch him if he messes up, he seems a lot more uncertain about this. Um, does he have? Uh, this doesn't help, does it? No, he doesn't really have a way to increase his uh, jump distance. That's okay, so you'll just make a normal roll. Okay. Um, 
he doesn't hit a step like uh, like Viren did, but he also doesn't land with the with the grace of of Tekka. Um, he was definitely shaking before and after the jump, but he lands on the steps and uh, uh, dusts off his pants and tries to play it cool, but he he really can't manage. It was it was scary. Uh, Pip, you are free to just fly down after Pontifex. Yeah. Pip is just zooming down after Pontifex uh, grabs his grabs his like uh, shoulder with a talon and then uh, drops out of polymorph and then it's just P Pip holding onto your shoulder, falling with squeak like latched onto his scarf, flying in the wind behind him, and Pip just yells, "I trust you this time! <laughs> I'm out of spell slot." <laughs> <laughs> this is like when uh, when people at amusement parks or, like the operators they troll you they pretend there's something yeah, yeah. wrong with the with the with, with the ride belt. right before he it takes totally off yeah he believes you and he starts freaking <laughs> out <laughs> I don't know what a spell slot is <laughs> the, the first few seconds of just free fall they were kind of accelerating um by now you you're quite used to the feeling of flight it's so liberating it, it it feels like nothing else running has nothing on flying um Pip is like and, alternating between screaming and laughter yeah but like the, the <laughs> <laughs> moment of panic when you think that pontifex may not have you um but Pontifex, you can safely slow down your fall by the time the um, you're you're way past the clouds, and uh, um, the the fall is so long, and the wind, especially at the start, is so strong that you're actually beginning to drift away from the staircase a little bit. Yeah, I think that's um, part of his intention. I think he's like trying not to crash into the staircase mid fall. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's. That, that would be bad. Lean with me. Um, and towards the end, uh, but as odd for a frog person as it is to just fall all the way down the side of a mountain next to a magical stone staircase that has been made only a few days prior, you land safely on the snow <laughs> below. Just the you look big up. whoosh of magic, uh, followed by like the like the the sound of like a water drop as we touch the ground. <laughs> this ginger. <laughs> you look up, half expecting the rest of the party to follow along, but there's just one small dot in the sky. Half crying, half laughing, and you point the staff upward and. You time your casting a feather fall just at the right moment. I guess. <laughs> can I can I play a risky here just to, to add some level of exhilaration? <laughs> what if I make it think I'm not going Professor. to catch him? What if I wait until the very last moment? Oh hell, don't catch him. The whiplash. It <laughs> just whoosh. <laughs> oh. It's magic, it's fine. You're fine. And so the two of you are at the bottom of the stone staircase. Everybody else has a two-day climb downward <laughs> ahead of them. The yeah, I did not want to take those the stairs again. Sunny's <laughs> just clinging like, to, like, the, the center column of the spiral staircase. It takes a few minutes to stop shaking and begin to climb down. You know, Pip, I said I would, I would catch people if they came after but like, if they don't show up in like the next you know, minute or so, I'm not <laughs> going to. So I hope they realize that and don't just decide later in the day. You know, this is terrible. We're just going to jump. The professor is probably ready at every given moment of the day. <laughs> you know, in hindsight, I should have like put some limitations. Like I'm going, and if you want, you can come with me, and also you can come after. But like immediately after, otherwise, I'm going to lose interest. That's that's fine. I think I can tell them while they sleep tonight. Pip and Bontifex, you had two, two more days of downtime. Did that sound <laughs> ominous? Uh, what do you mean, tell them why they sleep? I can... 
Okay, this is gonna sound crazy. I can talk to people through their dreams now. What, what do you mean now? Yeah, Granny told me how. It, Last you time. Talk to people's dreams? Yeah, I can. If. What, ha, go to sleep, I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> go to sleep right now. Go to sleep. You know. It's like 9 a.m. You not knowing spells and, and the gibberish and that you were taught by who you were taught by. Maybe I am perfectly fine in leaving my dreams untampered with as you don't have to. I'm right here. You can just talk to me. Okay. Okay. I'm bored. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I would offer to play dragon chess, but uh, I don't know. What do kids like to do? Do you want to just go blow stuff up? Yeah. <laughs> <Just do it>. <laughs> <laughs> the professor's just going to lead Pip closer to the woods and just start casting <laughs> thunderballs and just start blasting Whoa. the forest into pieces. <laughs> I'm oh, sure this the, won't end badly at the all. The birds really hate that, professor. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Uh, I will change the damage by bludgeoning as he makes a giant water ball and is just like <laughs> crashing through this like grove. Professor, no! <laughs> they appear in this corner and stuff. Oh, fine. God! <laughs> no, I hate it. Stop. No, well, now there's so many to go that you have to fertilize. I'm just going to fireball and just, like, melt all these trees into ashes for fertilizer. No. And, like, a giant water ball. And he's just, just absolutely wreaking havoc on these poor, unsuspecting corner of the woods. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Off okay. in the distance, you just hear it the occasional... The explosions. Pip takes a bat out of his hat as out of his hat of vermin and just says, "Go warn them." <laughs> <laughs> warn the woods. Okay. Frogman's Pip coming. Pip can get two more days of downtime work uh, normal because Aaron isn't with him during this yeah. time. The um, professor's not helping. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing better to do, so might as well dump my spell slots for something. It just blows this forest to oblivion. I like to imagine like Luzanne had foreseen the destruction and just silently <laughs> thought to herself, that's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've never really had like destructive power until relatively recently and like oh, oh yeesh I get it <laughs> this is great everyone else He's is climbing down the steps level fireball the, just hearing explosions in the distance like do you think they're okay down there maybe we should hurry <laughs> see they're in trouble so many explosions <laughs> like far more than has ever been unleashed in a combat <laughs> this is seven Seven of them, with more than half being like fourth level and above. Oh no, and I can regenerate spell slots as a wizard. Like ten explosions. <laughs> the random like thunder chromatic orbs just blasting everywhere. Oh yeah. So, when you guys go to sleep, <laughs> uh, Tekka. Mm hmm. In your dreams tonight, you are wafting through a field of wildflowers when, uh, you know, they smell pleasant. They're sort of gently drifting in the breeze. And uh, you lean down to uh, look, in, look a bit closer at one of the flowers. And um, in, like, the center of the flower... You see Pip's face. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, Tekka! Tekka, pick me! P pick Pip. me, Tekka! Who, who captured you? 
who have trapped you in this flower. I am not trapped, Tekka. I am enlightened. Pick me. No. Pick me it, up. Is it some sort of trap? It's not a trap, Tekka. I am speaking to you in your dream. Fine. Fine. Uh, and pick Tekka, me. Yeah, Tekka will pick the bit flower. Ow! I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, okay. Uh, hold on. Let me, I, you need to put me in water. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start to wilt. Okay. I'm gonna make a pool, okay? Uh, picture a pool. Fine. It appears. <laughs> I think it's just like a pu small little puddle. <laughs> from like, yeah, it, it, as if it was just raining. Like the bare minimum. So. Yeah. You have many explanations. Yeah. Tell me. All right. So, you know my granny? Yes. Hold on. Let me let me get out of this thing. Uh, the flower expands as Pip uh, crawls his way out of it. Uh, hands pushing aside the petals as he worms his way out. And he's about halfway through. Uh, waist where the petals is, kind of like a little skirt. And he says, um, Granny, Granny, uh, went dreamwalking with me the other day. We went to see, like, a bunch of birds in, Wait. in, like, Bird City. Pip. It's called Pip. Talents Reach. Yeah? Pip, you met Granny and you did not mention this. Uh, any, any of us? I'm, I'm telling you now. Do you remember the last time we met Granny? Yeah. She held such power that we could have done nothing, she decided. Yeah. And yet you decided to keep this silent. Uh, yeah. We were busy. We had many days of travel up that mountain, but fine. Tell me your story. What what did you and Granny do? We went to Talon's Reach. It's where Glimmer lives. It's a city of birds. Okay. And she... she uh, I realized that... I realized something about myself. That if Granny could do that, well, part of her power is with me. And I can do that too. So, so anything she can do, you can do better. Well, I don't know about better. I've but... seen your granny. She is worse. Really? Aw. Aw. So, what did she want you to do? What, what wild command did she have in mind? Um, that's, that's kind of the weird part, Tekka. Is in this, in this place she just wanted me to have fun. Um, but she did tell me this. When we do go down in that cave, she wants to make sure that we don't hurt her sister. That's not for us to do. She wants to do that herself. Her, her sister is down there. Okay. Yeah, the witch. So, are we to expect someone just as powerful as your granny then down there? Uh, is maybe. she the reason for all the explosions we're hearing down there? Mm. <laughs> Uh, no. What That's... is happening? Uh, Are you in need of help? I, well... No. The professor's just going through a little bit of a moment. He's... He, he's, he's taking out his feelings on the world. It's <laughs> our teacher having separation excited. 
be yeah. God. Okay. Yeah. Now, Pip, I know you're a young child, but I need you to do your best to calm him down. Okay? Okay. Okay. Because if Granny's sister hears a lot of magic up yeah. there, we don't know what she will do. It's probably bad things to us. Right. And we will not be there to help you. Oh, that's that's why I came to talk to you. Um, don't jump down in the middle of the night. Cause, cause he's not gonna be awake to stop you from from uh from dying at the end. You have not heard what Sonya has been saying on our walks. What she does? Trust, trust me, there will be no jumping. Okay. She is not happy with the lack of hand rails. Ah, uh, so I should visit her next. <laughs> If you know a way to calm her down, or if you can turn into a bird again, or... I can actually make myself look like anything. Well, I was thinking, not in a dream, like, physically carry her down. Oh! Hmm. I don't... Hmm. I don't know. I bet I could just cheer her up in her sleep. She likes clowns, right? I'll show up as a clown in her dreams tonight. Mm. And uh, tell jokes and make her laugh. Bring her a meal in her dreams. I think that could help. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Okay, don't we jump. We have a lot to say afterwards, but uh, afterwards. Am, am I in trouble, Tekka? You should tell us next time. Okay? She also called me by a weird name. She said, I, like, my name was esther or something anyway bye <laughs> and that just pops out of the flower I'm guessing. <laughs> yep <laughs> great <clears throat> you're bringing her a meal in her dream. in dreams? sunny's dream a clown comes to bring her a cream pie <laughs> <laughs> Well, hello there, Sonny. <laughs> Has someone been a good girl? Would you like some pie? <laughs> um, is it poison? Oh, no. Well, of course not. Unless you'd like it to be. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll take it as it is. Thank you. Not to the face, please. Whatever you do, don't jump <laughs> in the middle of the night. I wasn't planning on jumping. Why am I jumping? Am I jumping right now? Don't sleepwalk like you're not. doing right now. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, you're getting to the edge. There's no handrails. <laughs> Sweet dreams, Sonny. See you in the sunshine. Everybody's woken up by Sonny waking up screaming. <laughs> <laughs> like it's been about two minutes since uh, Pip left your dream <laughs> no more than two minutes um yeah this is probably Tekka and Brooke just like grappling Sunny like trying to <laughs> keep her you're from all... Yeah. you're all tied down to the steps Ari made sure of it this is uh, oh, okay. what you guys realized on the way up that like sleeping on the steps is super dangerous yeah. um, main reason why Aaron didn't jump down after Pontifex is not that he didn't trust him to catch him he knew he would have um, it's specifically to keep the rest of you safe uh, great so call he, he, like there was zero chance of Sunny ever possibly rolling off the steps but for some reason she was really convinced that she was sleepwalking off the edge just now and you have the suspect in mind <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I could imagine, like, Brooke is trying to hold Sunny's hand, trying to calm her down, and Tekka is just, like, a deep groan. <laughs> <sighs> Sunny, Sunny, you're, you're fine? You're fine. That was... There was a Pip. clown? The pie was poisoned? It, it was Pip <laughs> pulling a prank on you. I, I'm sorry. 
I think Pip is getting restless and bored down there. It was definitely a clown. It was twice as tall as Pip. Pip has power over dreams. He apparently his granny has taught him to enter people's dreams. You can? Yes. So oh. before we're down here, you'll probably get another wizard from him. Okay, great. That is terrifying. Good to know. Would you like me to sit on the other side of you, like between you and the edge? I can do that. Yes. Yeah. You can Thank stay you. over there. I'll say, yeah. Um, I'll make sure you don't sleepwalk. I, I don't sleep. I I'm yeah. not a sleepwalker. I don't know why I thought I would have. Yeah, no, and I'll, I'll be sure you, you don't, I promise. Yeah, thanks. That, that makes me feel a lot better. Um... And uh, at some point in the future, we have to... Uh, I don't know. How do we keep someone out of our dreams? Can, can, can we do that? You can try not sleeping. It works for me. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I was trying to in the mood. You know what? I don't think I'll be sleeping the rest of this night anyway. And, uh... You guys still have, like, over a day of marching <laughs> to, to <Yeah>. do. <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> but eventually, a day and a half later, the party meets back up. At one point, Pip tries to visit Virian in her <laughs> dreams, but realizes he can't. <gasps> That's correct. Mm-hmm. That's not a revelation. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> it's just true. It's just, it just, just how it works. It's factual. Hey, and guess what? It doesn't work on our end either. Hmm? Oh, so many people immune to my shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them. <laughs> um... Arin is looking uh, particularly undead by the time the party is done with their climb back to the base of the steps. Um, Sunny straight, straight up kisses the snow beneath her feet by the time she arrives. Um, everyone is half fine and you're gone. reunited. Yes, half the forest <laughs> is gone. <laughs> Were you attacked while we were gone? What happened? It's still sizzling. <laughs> Trees split in half, buried into the ground. The floor, the soil is completely turned into mud from all the water and then immediately like petrified from all the heat. Just craters everywhere from thunderballs. Just absolute chaos. This is what and happens when Talix is not keeping an eye on you. And this is what happens when I am left alone. <laughs> With another person with poor impulse control. Look, I, I had a lot of time and uh, no dragon chess opponents. And I'm practicing. I've never really hey. solved my problems with fireballs before, but uh, as of late, it has been surprisingly effective. So more practice is good. Hey, Aaron. W Arn, what is it? Did you run out of water? No, I still have some. I'm just... Well... It's been a few days without Squeak. I've been trying to conserve mine, just in case. You wouldn't... Would you mind taking another no, trip no, for me? No, 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 no. Yeah, I'll do it. Um, I appreciate can we have it. The, can we have that dragon scale, though? Can we borrow it forever? Uh, have <laughs> what? The, 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 the dragon scale, the t topaz. Um, that's fine with me. Okay. Yeah. I need it. We can, we can do a trade. Here we All go. All right, sweet, go. <laughs> and he's back. <laughs> Arin will proceed to just give, give himself a quick, uh, uh just shower with 
with this uh, sea water. All right. Hey, Tekka. Pip. You sound have angry. You, have you told <laughs> Teacher yet? Have you told? No. Do it now. Okay. So, hey, everyone. Mm, Granny visited me uh, like a week ago. And I didn't tell anyone. And for that, I am sorry. Um, but, but I didn't, I, I needed some time to think about it because there was a lot going on. Um, but Granny took me to a place called, uh, Talon's Reach. It's where Glimmer's from. It's like a bunch of birdhouses on a mountain. And, um, she let me have fun there. And uh, I had a good time. Uh, but what she said has to do with where we're going. Because uh, in the cave, that's where her sister lives. And she doesn't want us to hurt her sister. But if we wanted to mess that werewolf up, that's fair game. And... You know, this whole woods thing, it could be seen as a warning. Letting a witch prepare for us to arrive. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we we heard those explosions from like a day and a half up there. <laughs> oh, and to be fair, the, the distance vertically is uh, tra sound travels better going up because there's nothing in the way yeah but it also travels better through the ground than through the air uh, especially when i'm blowing up the floor oh i see what you're saying <laughs> yeah professor <laughs> okay i may have been a bit overzealous but honestly it's your fault someone should have stopped me i said stop Five times before I gave up. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear you over the sounds of the explosions. <laughs> but I anyway. asked, hey, you're bored. Do you want to go blow stuff up? And you said, yes, very emphatically. I and was then at some excited point, first. I lost where you were, but I was having a good time. So I Until didn't Until you started killing innocent <laughs> animals. <laughs> I'm sorry, I wouldn't be laughing when I say that. <laughs> <laughs> that that's that's squeak laughing. As, as, as squeak, squeak was having a grand time. He was definitely encouraging the professor. He was a little literal little devil on his shoulder. Come on, you call that a fireball? <laughs> My dad could make way bigger. <laughs> anyway, she called me she called me Aster. That's not my name. By the way, it's Pip. <laughs> are, are you sure? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. That's what my parents named me. You knew your parents? Yeah, they... I knew them and they... They disappeared when I was nice. five. Oh, I can relate. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just another... Uh... Got to see yours few hundred years and maybe you'll meet yours oh <laughs> well, um, you know it's going poorly so yeah I'm also she asked me a riddle and I think I know the answer now but I don't know I don't know what good that does but um you see this big shiny rock it's a topaz. Yeah. It's, it's a rock. It's from uh, Runamella. Yeah. Um, Granny, she had this ability. She, she could do this thing where she could look at people from really far away. But she always needed like a really shiny object to look through in order to do it. 
And um, our our time up there on the mountain reminded me of it because like someone was someone was looking like through you, Professor. Uh, yes. And so I asked your mom if if that was something I could learn to do, and she said if you go and find the werewolf, then that would be a good start. So I, I I'm gonna try something. I'm. I remember how Granny used to do this. She would say something like, Shamalanana Kilaba Bibble dee doo dee doo. Shamalama ding dong. Yeah. And she'd, she'd take out like like a piece of, of whoever she was trying to look at. Like this werewolf fur, for instance, and this vial of blood. And she'd like Hover it over the stone while she said Shaman Lama Shibuta Blah Blah. Whoa! It cast crying. <laughs> On the surface of the topaz, an image begins to take shape. It's really, really small. And you're trying to look at it, and it's not really becoming any clearer, but then you hold the topaz upward, and much like whenever you look through your other gem and you see a different reality on the opposite side, when you look through the topaz with your spell active, you see an entirely different scene on the other side. So you hold it all the way up to one of your eyes and you close the other one just to focus on this scene ahead of you. And you see a small area rock all around you including below and above a small cave there's a door on one end it's been built into the cave that otherwise looks for the most part natural so there's a single way out of this room that is for the most part empty you see a form in one corner, barely moving, and you hear this rasping noise, deep, heavy breathing that sounds very unnatural, very sickly. And you just listen to this sound. All the other noises around you are gone. You, you're barely aware of the party kind of naturally forming a group around you, a little circle, trying to see your topaz, trying to uh, look at your expression to judge whatever it is that you are seeing right now and only you. And you just hear this raspy breathing in and out. It's irregular. It's odd. It's off. The werewolf that you have fought before is in that corner. Half sitting, half laying down with his back against the wall. And all the wounds that you guys have inflicted on him, they're still there. Every single one of them. Not only are they still there, but they look worse. They are yellowed, full of pus. The fur is dirty around these wounds that are still spitting out blood. One of his eyes is, it reminds you of R and it's partially falling out of, it, of its socket. And there's something new on him. You hear them before you see them in the dark of the cave. You hear the rattling of metal against the stone of the cave. Chains on his wrists, on his ankles, around his neck. None of them actually tie him down to anything. They just dangle there. You drift your attention away from the form of the werewolf and towards the surroundings. There's almost a nothing here. It looks like a dog lives in this room there, rather than a person. There is hardly any furniture and what is there is scratched. Full, uh, and it's, it's falling apart and there is almost no... <clears throat> There's no personal belongings and almost uh, no tools. Uh, 
one set of clothes that are not even folded. They're just thrown in one corner and they're bloodied. And you notice something that you recognize. A, um, in the opposite corner from where the werewolf is panting, there is uh, a mask in the shape of Pontifex's face, but it's split in half. Left and right side in slightly a few inches apart from one another. There's multiple cuts and scratches on it. They don't look like claw marks at all. They look like the gashes that a weapon would have left on them. And there's even a few arrows sticking out of the mask that you recognize. Those are Arin's arrows poking out of this mask. There's nothing else going on in the room. For the duration of the spell, you just look around. There is just a sound of the werewolf panting and panting. He seems perhaps not exactly in pain, but also he's obviously not doing well. And he's not doing anything. He's just in that corner until the vision fades away. Whoa. And back to reality. Whoa, whoa. Okay, that worked. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that worked. And? The werewolf. He's... He's... He's dead. We we killed him, but he's... But he's alive, too. He's... Chained. Chained? It's like uh, the gods? Oh. Hey, that's like a good thing. Like the... the, the I don't know if it is. Uh, the mask, the the mask that that was made of your face, Professor. The macabre way to put it, but yes. That's what. They must have been using it to look through your eyes, because we. It was it was broken. It was destroyed. Uh, it was split in half, and there were. R and your arrows were sticking out of it. That must have been what Luzanne... Uh, out of what? The... I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> you know, don't, now I think about it, it is a difficult thing to explain. Okay. Did they I were the do ones that were wrong? spying on us. No. Right, the werewolf was using the mask of my face, the same one it used to get the, the leaf. But it was then manifested as that uh, arcane creature back in, by Luzan, and when we destroyed it with Aaron's arrows in play, it broke the mask and the arrows remained. It may be, maybe the damage I sustained, the, the werewolf somehow took a good brunt of it as well. I don't. But in either case, if, if it is dead, great. If it is undead, less great. But does it need the water? Does all undead need this water stuff that Orin needs? If it is chained, then great, think, out of sight, out of mind. I think it probably still wants what it wanted in life. It wants to kill us. So we go and kill it again. Well, I have less qualms about it destroying an undead than I do about Okay, hey now. Man, you know. Hey now. What? There, there is a gentleman with us who might, who might take offense to what you just said. I stand behind what I said, Professor. and I presume so does he. Aaron, was that offensive? I'll pretend I didn't hear it. Yeah. It was offensive. We have just rebuilt a professional relationship of some kind. I would rather not undermine it. So, instead of showing up to a cave to murder a man after murdering his wife and child, he is already dead. Now we're just going and putting down a, a living curse, we can call it. 
Mm. And I know I might not preach it very often, but I am still a cleric. I have somewhat of an obligation. Yeah. All right, well, we heading in this cave? Let's get this done. Before we go in, should I make a reinforcement? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what? <laughs> well, I have this bag of rocks, you see. <laughs> oh, no. You know, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> nah, I won't do it just yet. <laughs> Okay. ever there was a time to cast command do it this would be the time <laughs> plant <laughs> plant <laughs> alright then you begin to make your way towards the entrance of the cave um, and I suppose this is a perfect time to end the session we'll begin the next one uh as you begin to enter the cave. Whoa, oh, right. nice. All right. <laughs> <Oops>. Alphabetizing. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to be back. <laughs> oh, we missed you. I missed you guys. Welcome back. I think we would have not <laughs> had that moment. <laughs> yeah. Can't even imagine <laughs> it now. What would you guys do I without me? Thank you for the session, Winter. Yeah, yeah thank you. I thought we'd be, we would have been in a cave by now. But uh, if you guys had fun, then I am happy. <laughs> I had fun. Sorry yes. we screwed around a little. Oh, that's okay. How, how dare the party form bonds with each other and deepen our understanding of our characters. That will that will make it hurt more when one of you guys dies. <gasps> hey. You can't be Pippa, though. He has yeah. plot armor now. Plot armor for one month. <laughs> Twenty-eight days. Unless she lied. Oh. <sighs> oh. All right, then I'll I'll call the session here. I'll see you all next week. Yes. Yeah. Lovely. Very well then. See you next Sunday. Bye. Right. Bye. 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 Bye.